So the Misgift situation. As many of you guys know, over half a year ago, Misgift got called out for helping to cover up a crime that his friend Crazy Slick made towards the Twitch streamer Adriana Lee. This then spiraled into a massive drama, with Misgift struggling to take accountability for his role in minimizing what Crazy Slick did and minimizing his consequences. But what some of you may not remember is that the way this all came out was very coincidental and may have never happened if another streamer by a similar name, Slicker, didn't scam over $200,000 from various streamers and viewers and blame it on being addicted to gambling because this prompted a bunch of notable Twitch streamers, including Miskiff, to advocate for Twitch to ban gambling streams on their platform. One of the people who spoke up about this was Asmongold who said, How in the fuck is Slicker not banned on Twitch? Guy literally uses the platform to defraud dozens of people, streamers, and viewers alike. And admits it! Gideon's still sitting a perma, while Slicker gets to go live and laugh about actual crime. It's an absolute disgrace, Twitch. One of the biggest gambling streamers on Twitch, Trainwreck, responds to Asmongold by saying, Because your pals decided it was in their best interest to use and platform the very person that scammed everyone for his horse racing and tennis bets to somehow how twisted and wager their war against me, and we both know deep down why the insecure little man is doing this. Miskiff responds to Trainwreck by saying, If you were going to deplatform people for scamming others, shouldn't we have banned you for Joltcoin a few years back? To which Trainwreck responds, Are you going to send Maya and Mitch to Railroad and blackmail me like you did those girls to cover up all those sexual assaults, you fucking scumbag piece of shit? You want to come at me and make shit up? Then you better be sure you don't live in a glass house, you insecure pussy. To which XQC then responds, Oh, so Snap! Trainwrecks follows up his tweet by saying, The people involved know the truth, but for those of you that are farming drama and coming to split conclusions, let me be even more clear. Miskiff didn't assault the woman. He orchestrated the cover-ups for his friends. Exactly how my tweet reads. Shortly after Trainwrecks made that tweet, Miskiff ended up deleting his response to Trainwreck. So, according to Trainwreck's tweet, there are multiple sexual assaults that Miskiff is helping to cover up, and while we don't know all of them yet, one of the people who had their sexual assault covered up, Adriana Lee, ended up speaking out about this on her live stream. Here is what she said. I didn't think that something like this would happen, but I'm not necessarily upset about it. It's been over a year. So it was like June 7th, I think, that I came out with the twit longer. And over a year since I've faced the consequences of doing what I thought was the right thing to do and doing what Ms. Kiff and Maya asked me to do. Let's not forget this. Yesterday, Novaru, don't know who she is, welcome. Good. She went live and said prime. a bunch of shit about JST. Slick that was a lot, I guess is the word. Pretty malicious. Said a lot of things that was kind of fucked. It was, it was the worst day of my life. I mean, I was sitting there crying nonstop. I was having panic attacks. I was pretty scared. Uh, I thought I was gonna lose Slick. This I is up thought I would on, have to um, kick him out of my house because this is a video, by the I way, would not YouTube video. Any of that shit. I just, I'm not. If, if, just even though Slick's my best friend, I hang out with him literally every day. I'm not gonna tolerate stuff like that, and I would totally kick him out of the house. This is right so after I put the twit longer out. Yeah. We didn't really know what was happening you, because the person, the girl who this happened to, which is Adriana Lee, I mean, I don't know her for shit. I don't, I don't know her at all. The only person that kind of had word on it was Novaru, and Slick was just sitting there having panic attacks the entire time, freaking out, not knowing what's going to happen with his life. I just want to say this, and me and Maya totally agree on this. Listen to this part. What Slick did was inexcusable. I know he didn't do anything that was extreme, but what he did was inexcusable. We're very grateful to Adriana for doing the tweet that she did because she was forced into that listen to this she was forced into that position and she talked about her past experiences which is super brave and really really hard to do she and was also forced into that in like six hours right like she didn't even know what was happening and she was forced into tweeting the situation in six hours he said that what slick did, did was inexcusable and that's true because slick made people uncomfortable even though it wasn't his intention. Okay, that's the main thing I wanted to pull from that. There's just a lot of things that I've compiled over the past year that just point out like mostly the hypocrisy in the scene, in the way I've been very belittled as a content creator to the point where I almost reached out to Ms. Kiff and said, what the hell, like you, everything that you promised, everything that you and Maya promised is not happening. Like that I would still be accepted. And I want to share this. He harassed that girl. 
He did. He needs to get better. He needs to do shit better. It's 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 wrong. It's it's fucking wrong. I, I really think he need, he has a lot to work on, man. Uh, this did happen a year and a half ago. Uh, I think Slick has gotten a lot better, but he still has so much work because I, it just, that shit can't happen, man. This is something that I filmed, I think, like a long time ago. Because when you have illegal footage, you have hours of it. I was about drunk and I involving Slick. That's fucked up. I didn't even say anything about it. How, but, this this never got that big. Yeah, to this like, day. You know, I know the fucked up thing. I didn't want to bring it out because I knew I would get the short end of the stick bringing it out, especially with the Reddit coomers and whatever. So I just, you know, kept my distance, minded my business. Then some girl was like, this girl named Novaru. I don't know if you know her. Fuck Novaru. Novaru, maybe. She was like grasping at straws because her channel was starting to get irrelevant and she wasn't involved in like the circle anymore. So she was like, I don't like Slick because she touched my friend. We weren't friends. She had me blocked on fucking Twitter. I don't even know why. She had me blocked because she had beef with my other friend. So uh, she had me blocked on Twitter. She told my story saying, oh, he touched my friend while she was unconscious. Told that story. And then it, it blows up on LSF. Everyone's like, the girl needs to come out. Whoever the girl is needs to come out. So I'm like, what the hell? I woke up. I was trying to go to physical therapy that day. I got a bad back. And then I was like, fuck, I got to go to my friend. So I went to my friend who is the one who told me, because obviously I was unconscious, who was the one who told me that he was doing that. Because apparently there was like my group of friends who was like trying to protect me from him and kept telling him to stop and he just kept doing it. Then I went over to his house and I was like, okay, let's write this twit longer because fuck Nova, I'm going to go on on Nova, I'm going to go on on Slick. Because fuck them, like it sucks that I have to do this, but I have to because right. I was asking for the girl to come out. So I go right. upstairs. He he's in a meeting because he works from home. So he goes in his meeting. I go upstairs to my friend because my friend was at work. The girl because her boyfriend girlfriend. I hear Mitch, Barry, and Maya come in. I okay. don't want to deal with them. I just want to write this to it longer and move on with my life. Maya was like, um, I just don't think you should say anything at all. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I or she said I should say something anonymously or whatever. And was like, no, or or I should say it wasn't that big of a deal. And I'm over it now. And I was like, listen, I'm gonna be true to myself. I'll make. Slick look good, like like an angel, because I did. In the tweet longer, if anybody ever bothered to read it, because a lot of people didn't, um, I make Slick look like an angel. I'm like, hey, it's whatever. This made me uncomfortable, but it's whatever. Even though I, I was upset with it, I just, you know, I came to a even point with Maya, because Maya was like, we don't want to kick him out. So I was like, okay, whatever. I didn't want to be socially excluded. I expressed that. I said, hey, I'll do whatever. Like, this is obviously I'm going to tell my side of the story but i i can i'm able to come to an even point with you so you guys don't exclude me because knowing this like as a smaller streamer in austin these people have the power to isolate me isolate the fuck out of me and she said okay that's fine and guess what happened anyways guess what fucking happened anyways to this day every time i hang out with a streamer and they know the Ms. kiff circle jerk he will go and message them whatever big streamer I'm with, a long paragraph on how they don't, she doesn't want them to be around because it triggered him because he almost got kicked out. Damn. I'm like shadow banned from that whole group. And the thing that sucks is like, I'm friends with these bigger streamers. They know I'm right, right? And they've reached out to me and like, are you okay? Whatever. But they, they can't be seen in public with me. They can't collaborate with me because at the end of the day, if they do, guess what happens? Slick goes in and is like, I don't want you around her anymore. And Slick has the power to because Slick can cut him off from this mischief circle jerk, which they all are like grasping to get in. You know what I mean? It's the one what thing the that really like made me contemplate like unaliving because it's like I work so hard to get where I am. And like I'm from the trailer parks of Michigan. Like I'm not from like I don't got like a rich family. Like I got kicked out when I was 17 and I worked really hard to get to where I am and to do what I, my dream job. But now it's like things are just so hard for me because, you know, I, I came here for. Mind you, I work two real jobs now because I wasn't able to keep up with streaming. It could be any factor. I'm not saying it's only because of the slick situation. It could literally be any factor, okay? I'm not saying, but, but obviously this didn't help. And I'm sure I would be somewhere else with my career if this didn't happen. Before I moved here, I, I used to visit a lot because I was friends with all these people. And now it's like, I'm just like a social outcast. That's fucked. So you, he, he tried to do all that while you were like drunk, I'm assuming? Yeah, I was drunk and then I passed out because I drank too much. But I was like, it was like in an Airbnb. So I was just in a room. And then he kept like trying to come in, like feel my chest and like touch my boob. And my friend was like, yo, stop. I was like, I'm just checking her pulse. He's like, dude, stop. You're not checking her pulse. Like you're <laughs> checking her pulse, grabbing her. Yeah. What the and fuck? Then, 
And then he would go away and he would come back and try to do it again. So my friends literally had to guard me. And uh, the craziest part is, it's not just like, oh, accusation. He admitted this. He admitted to doing this. Like, he put out his tweet longer after mine saying, oh, I'm so sorry, I, drunk. I, I was drunk, whatever. He did it. He admitted to doing it. It's not even just like, oh, that's a weird accusation that you did. I didn't even hear about this, to be honest at all. So pushed under the rug. He weaseled his way in. No to way. To the party. Because I collaborated with him. And I talked to the person who organized this party. He found a way to insert himself into Cypher PK's party. You know what I mean? After he saw that I was... So obviously he's like trying to stop my bag intentionally. Not to mention he would see who I was hanging out with on Twitter and invite them to where whatever like next Ms. House party that was happening. To sum it up for y'all, I've had my notes. My career was stunted because I was reaching personal record views before this whole thing happened. A lot of people who I've been friends with who are bigger streamers are obviously afraid to be around me. I did a stream where I drank with three of my friends. It was a grand old happy time. Come to find out that later that night, Slick messages a paragraph to both of my friends who I streamed with. Who knows about the third one? I was confirmed two of them, don't know about the third one. Saying, why are you around Adriana Lee? She triggers me, please don't hang around her when I was just trying to collaborate with some of my friends who happened to be bigger streamers than me. And guess what? I did not see one of those people because one of those people works for OTK. I have never hung out with him since. And listen, hey, it's not his fault. It literally is not his fault. I don't want to stop his bag. I don't want to be the reason that he gets fired or the reason that he can't make money. Do your thing. Like, I, I, if I, as a friend or as someone who does care about people's well-being, yeah, do your thing. It fucking sucks that I'm this hush-hush word, this hush-hush situation. Nobody can be my friend or be around me without Slick having something to say about it. So I was, I was hanging out with this exclusive group of girls one time and just going to the bars with them. Randomly, doesn't even talk to these girls, isn't even friends with these girls, text them, want to come to Ms. Kiff party? What are they going to say? Of course they're going to say yes. Because this is networking that helps everyone's career. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. People know their friend fucked up, but they want to give a reason to why I fucking deserved it. They want to twist things around. So it's like, oh yeah, he did that, but she's a bitch. Oh yeah, he did that, but, 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 but she's a whore. Like people want to spin as much as they can to give a reason why Adriana Lee deserved that. When everyone knows I was fucking asleep. How the fuck does any girl take accountability? Take accountability if you're up and say, what the fuck did I do? I fucking fell asleep. And he, he wants to go around. Well, she tried to apologize to me at a party. She, she go, he goes up to my fucking friends, my fucking friends. Oh, oh, like you're Adriana's friend. Well, guess what? She apologized to me at a party. Slick, if you're watching this, where the fuck did I apologize for? What the fuck did I apologize for? I would love for you to fucking tell me. I probably said, hey, sorry this is all happening. This is very stressful. Mind not talking shit about me? Are we on the same page? Fuck Novaru. We hate Novaru. Please stop fucking talking shit about me. Yes, I, I said that to him because I would like to stop being fucking shit talked. Stop being fucking excluded. Stop being, have my friends, my best friends for fucking years turn on me because they're tired of not being invited to things because they're friends with me. People I've literally known for years. Like, we're super close with have turned on me and tried to come up with some random reason to not like me because they're mad they can't get in the Ms. Kiff circle jerk their careers are also taking a toll and it's not fair to them that their careers are taking a toll for something that happened to me when i was sleeping something i didn't want to fucking say something Novaru fucking came out about although i am still like obviously allowed to be and valid to be upset about me being touched when i was asleep what pisses me off the most is the way it was treated afterwards and the way it was so pushed onto the rug in the way that I'm, as I said, being silenced and my career is being pushed down. I've talked to lawyers about this situation. I've worked too fucking hard to get to where I am coming from fucking nothing for somebody who hasn't had a fucking job in their motherfucking life, never filled out a fucking W2 who's living in a mansion crying. I'm so sad that these rumors are being spread about me while he's crying in his fucking mansion. Meanwhile, I had to get two fucking jobs just to pay my fucking rent. I've had to do things that I don't want to do that might possibly hurt my fucking reputation to pay my fucking rent. Well, <laughs> cries in his fucking mansion. It's so fucking tone deaf. 
You don't realize how fucking privileged you are. I asked Britt if she was comfortable sharing her story because she told me this in a Discord a while ago. And I wasn't going to tell anybody. But today I reached out. I said, hey, are you comfortable sharing this story with me? So basically what she told me on Discord, and I have proof of here, okay, is that one day, she's, she loves Poggers community, okay? She, she loves Poggers community, everything about it. So one day, Slick reaches out to her. What's your snap? And she gives him her snap. He then messaged her saying, I'm jacking off right now. Or like something horny. I just remember something to do with jacking off. And she did not reply. So he immediately blocked her. And mind you, this event happened after he was exposed for being creepy. You would think someone would learn. You'd think, oh, we promised Slick is going to change for the better would be a thing. And this happened. Honestly, I don't mind if my name is on it, as long as I'm not the only one. He was very gross to me, but it was over Snap, so I don't have any screenshots. Once I didn't entertain his sexual messages one night, he totally blocked me on Snapchat the next morning. Crazy Slick in my best friend I'm Girly TV's chat, because I'm a mod here. Yo, you didn't follow me yet. Kind of weird. Wait, I feel like he says, we could have dated, shaking my head. Another time, peace, have good stream. Which is like, whatever, he's just being weird. Can you follow me? I'll follow back. Ha ha. Blocked. Okay. You don't follow me yet, by the way. Kind of weird. Okay, awkward. I don't know. True, you did. Now can we mount? What do you do for fun? Do you drink? I was 19 at the time. Uh, you're crazy, whatever. Um, here's my snap. Sounds like a good idea. I'll add you. Are you ever going to come to Texas? Yes, I want to move there when I get partnered. When you move there, we can hang. Hee hee. Are you here yet? I want to hang. Buy my plane ticket. Hmm. If I'll do, if I do, are you down to hang? Yeah. Where are you going to sleep? I said, on the fridge. Damn, what the hell? You might get cold. No, it's hella comfy. Shit, I see you. I guess I got the bed to myself. GG. Want to sleep in my bed, idiot? SMH. Hi, have a good Christmas. You have my snap. Yeah, he obviously removed me from snap. We didn't really talk on snap. You kissed me, by the way. I didn't reply. And then this is after I... We talked at the party. Are we good? Yeah, we're okay. Can we get this removed? Yeah, that's fine. Same to you. Thank you. Hope you've been doing all right. This is after he tweeted. You only talked to him because you wanted people to stop shit, shit talking you. A fucking course that's why I fucking talked to him. That literally, it literally clicks. It literally makes sense. And then want to get this article removed? Yeah, sure. That's fine. Same to you. Thank you. Hope you've been doing all right. And I didn't reply because at this point I was pissed because this is after he tweeted out the whole, I'm so depressed because people were spreading rumors about me. It's not fucking rumors. You literally admitted it yourself. People hate Sienna May for touching her ex-boyfriend when he was sleeping, but everyone forgives Slick for doing it, for touching a girl, not even an ex. No, someone he didn't fucking know. You survived. You feeling okay? I'm still drunk. I can see that. Where did you wake up? At my Airbnb. Oh shit, really? You were past the fuck on, out on the bed. We were guarding you from that one dude who was like stalking you and Enna. Black Justin Bieber here, hair. He kept trying to touch you when you were passed out to see if you were alive. That is the same person who wrote the twit longer with me. Because mind you, how the fuck am I going to write a twit longer when I was fucking asleep? So that same person said this. Facts. I was in the room when it happened. Later, they came over to try to figure out how to resolve the situation. Assured us actions would be taken. But it ended up being downplayed to what was agreed upon. They even had us let them approve tweets. Girls sent out about the situation. So Maya had to approve my tweet. Not to mention, I was told that Ms. sent the most credible, nicest girl on Twitch to talk to me instead of him going over there because it would look better. It'd be better to convince me not to, not to get slick kicked out. And at first it's like, oh, everything's gonna be normal. It's gonna be fine. Like we're, 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 we're friends. Like it's okay. Like you're gonna be invited to parties still. You're not gonna be socially outcasted. Maya invited me to her little animal sanctuary volunteer thing. I said, oh yeah, I would love to volunteer. Slick was in there in the discord. I didn't care. I was like, whatever. If he's gonna volunteer for animals, like I don't fucking care. When I find out people were actually going to the sanctuary to do work, I was like, oh cool. Like, let me check the discord. Like I'll see what days I'm available. I would love to help out. I'm removed from the discord. Like months after the whole slick situation settled, she doesn't have to look good anymore. I'm removed from the Discord. Every single time I see her in a public venue, she stares me down. And sometimes I think it's not the big deal. And I, I've actually think recently, I'm gonna walk up to her and say, hey, is everything okay with us? Because I, I'm so confused. We're on 6th Street and Miz is there. And I'm like, oh, hey, Miz, like, good to meet you again. Like I try to like literally just clear the air. 
Minx was there. He runs away playful like this. He runs like, oh my god, get away from me, you tried to cancel my best friend. Oh no, get away from me, you tried to cancel my best friend. Repeatedly running around saying that. And I was like, bro, were you not there? The person who told me to put something out? Like, what is it? Like, I was like, obviously drinking. So it's like, why is this getting thrown in my face when I'm just trying to have a good time with my friends? I'm having like a lot of my friends text me right now or people who are in the Austin scene saying like, I've heard these bad things about you. I'm sorry. Like I, I shouldn't have believed it. I shouldn't have like turned my back towards you. Everyone's like, well, Train's using your experience for leverage. I'm just glad that somebody bigger is expressing this because obviously I couldn't tell the truth, I couldn't talk about it for a long time because I'm drama whore with uh, everything to gain and they have everything to lose or whatever. It wasn't assault. Well, I guess, it, I don't know what, what is assault defined? He did not rape me. He did not stick a finger on me or whatever, but he did try to touch, he touched my chest. He touched my chest multiple times when he was asked to stop, multiple times. He kept insisting multiple times to do that. Whether that's harassment or assault, that's up to you. I guess it's up to me. It's something that makes me fucking uncomfortable. It's something that's fucked up. It's something that should not happen to any woman. So later in the stream, Adriana finds a screenshot of what Crazy Slick said to her in her live stream chat. He said, I made one of the biggest girl streamers on Twitch. I got you. I made Katarino never forget that. Like she didn't even know what was happening and she was forced into tweeting the situation in six hours. And so... In her doing that, I'm so, so everybody is so sorry to her um, that she had to go through that because it's so un- As Kyle also stated, this is the narrative I was put in when it first happened. Oh, we're sorry to her. This sucks. We're sorry. And over time, the narrative that I was put in is she's a drama whore. Oh, she's a whore, so she deserved this. She's, she's a bitch, whatever. Like, a lot of rumors were started. I was put into a narrative of I was just doing this for clout when- when it first happened, this was the narrative it was in. And, and Slick was going to get help. And as Slick self-reported in his I'm depressed tweet, he, didn't, he never got help. Mitch was there saying those things, trying to make me not say as my, oh, well, you know, like, he would never do that, blah, 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 blah. Like, like you just shouldn't say anything. Like, that's for, oh, man, you know. The next day, or maybe it was two days later, he comes up to me, he goes, Adriana, can I talk to you? We go outside. He says, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry that all this happened to you. Um, I, it was really wrong for me to try to downplay it. I'm really upset with how the situation was handled behind the scenes. Like, there's shit you don't even know about. And I'm so, so sorry for that. Like, I hope we're good. I'm so sorry. I said, thank you, Mitch. I really appreciate you reaching out um, to me with this. And then he moved to LA. And, and I hate to be that person, but there's so many situations where like I wanted to give up on living because of the fact that it was just a joke to people. The fact that I was touched was a joke to people and that nobody seemed to fucking care. And I saw right in front of my eyes the people that I thought were my friends leave, uh, disregard our friendship for clout because it made people slick, uncomfortable, slick, Ms. whatever, to be around me. And it fucking hurt. And yeah, obviously there's a lot of instances where it's like, wow, I could have been in that stream. I could have uh, excelled my career that way. But what hurt the most is the people that I called my fucking friends, my best fucking friends, turn on me because their career was more important. And that's what kept me up at night. And that's what made me fucking wish, I, if I could go back in time, I'd sit there and sneakily record the fucking situation. The, the, the twit longer writing room. I, and I even asked Kyle, the one we're on the phone with, I said, do you have cameras in your house? Do they have audio? He said they don't go back that far. And they only go off when the Amazon person delivers a fucking package or whatever. They blacklist, they, I have been blacklisted from events and things were harder for me to grow as a Twitch streamer. Period. Think of it this way. Adriana Lee becomes big YouTuber. Adriana Lee achieves her dreams. People look up Adriana Lee on Google search. People see this article. They say, what? New YouTuber that I want to watch, Adriana Lee, had this incident? And then guess what happens? It gets brought up again. And guess what? Ms. Kiff, OTK, whatever the fuck. Guess what they don't want? It brought up again. So guess what they're going to do to make sure it's not brought up again? Make sure my career doesn't excel. 
because if my career, it's just literally A plus B equals whatever. One plus two equals three, okay? Like, it's so, use your brain. He sent me this clip. Of what you can deem of it, it's sexual harassment, whatever. At a low scale, it's not really a big deal. Uh, I don't think people really gave a shit and really cared. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this off if you're gonna be like this. I'll just turn it off. Yikes. It's so fucked up that like something that like borderline fucking destroyed my career. Yeah. Is just like a joke. Oh, nobody really what? cared. No, nobody really cared. 90% of people, look, I, I don't think there's a single person that we used to hang out with that doesn't hang out with Slick anymore because of what happened. I actually think there's literally none. Because the reality is, worst comes to worst of it, it's mm -hmm. fucking like sexual harassment, right? I mean, like, who, like, no one, it, it, of what you can deem of it, it's sexual harassment, whatever. At a low scale, it's not really a big deal. I don't think people really gave a shit. And really cared. When people like think of it, they think that he stuck his fucking dick inside her without her consent. And I'm like, that's what people perceive it as. What the? I just hate the narrative of he didn't rape her, so it's okay. He didn't rape her, so it's okay. He only touched her inappropriately. Like, I don't understand how that's a narrative, how that makes it okay. Like, shit like this, because shit like this gets fucking pushed under the rug, thanks. It gets pushed under the rug is the reason why girls don't come out about this shit. Why the Me Too little movement that happened in fucking Hollywood is a thing. Because people don't want to fucking risk their careers and lose their careers because they got inappropriately touched. But we're not allowed to say anything because look at my fucking chat. Look how many people are constantly exactly. undermining this situation at any possible reason they can't. Look, if you look at your chat as well, like, so many people keep saying, like, why don't you take it to the police? Like, this is not a situation where you genuinely could have taken it to the fucking police. No, because you take it to the police and then what happens? You know what happens? Because I've called the fucking police multiple times exactly. on shit that's happened to me. Got followed by a fake police car in Detroit. I called the police. There's nothing we can do unless you have a picture of the license plate and the picture of the fake sirens. I got followed and handed physical notes of a guy telling me he's going to kidnap me and take me. I go to the police station. Yeah. I sit down with them. I show them. They say, oh, he does this to girls a lot. We can't do anything until, until he touches you, until he physically assaults you or kidnaps you. If I took this to the police, tell me what they would say. They would say, oh, do you have a picture of this happening? Do you have a video of this happening? Yeah. I have many witnesses. Even... He was stalking us all night and we ended up kissing. And I said that clearly in the thing because he was following me around, trying to kiss me, trying to kiss my friend's girlfriend, who was also my friend, Enna, the entire night. He got help and he changed for the better, right guys? Then explain what this is. This happened after he got help, so many by the way. That have also come out things, like, recently. These messages Adriana got from Britballs says, I honestly don't mind if my name is on it, as long as I'm not the only one. He was very gross to me, but it was over Snapchat, so I don't have any screenshots. Once I didn't entertain his sexual messages one night, he totally blocked me on Snapchat the next morning. So that's about everything I feel was important to show from Adriana's stream, but obviously with her stream being over two hours long, there was much more that she did say, so if you want to hear her full story and support her, I recommend going to her Twitch channel and watching the entire VOD yourself. So after all of this came out, Slick responded to it on Twitter by saying, I have never sexually assaulted anyone and never will. I have never had any intentions of ever harming anyone. I go out of my way to check on someone and I get accused of rape. This is unfair. I will be getting a lawyer as soon as possible. Learn from the Johnny Depp situation and think first. I never checked her pulse on her chest. I checked her neck and wrist only. When I refer to Johnny Depp, it means look at both sides and don't think guilty before proven innocent. Adriana's friend Kyle, who was there during the alleged assault, quote tweets Slick and says, better have a good lawyer. Fortunately, I work at a law firm. And then shortly after that quote tweet, Slick deleted his statement and hasn't said anything since. But someone who did comment on this situation is Miss Kiff's ex-girlfriend Maya, who was dating him at the time of this incident. Here is what she had to say about this. I'm gonna do my very, very best to clear it up and be very concise and to defend nobody except for myself in this situation and my actions or the reason that I chose to do what I did that day. I woke up to messages or something about Nova coming out, 
baiting a story that Adriana was going to write a twit longer about Slick and him sexually assaulting her or him being a predator or what, what have you. I woke Miz up, told him, woke Mitch up, told him. We were all freaking out. Miz said he was going to kick Slick out. Slick told me his side of the story. Mitch is friends with Adriana. Miz wanted me and Mitch to go to Adriana's house to talk to her and find out what happened. I wanted to go find out what happened and figure out what was going to happen with Slick. Originally, she said, and I know a lot of people are saying that I told her not to say anything, um, which I don't believe is the case. I It's been a long time, but she all, she said on her stream she didn't want to go, she didn't want to come out with it because she didn't want to get the short end of the stick, right? She felt like she was forced into the situation with um, Nova saying it, but she said on this stream, she was like, I knew I was going to get the short end of the stick if I say something. So we probably had a conversation that was like, are you sure you want to do this? Do you want to say anything or do you just want to do it anonymously? Something like that, right? She said that she wanted to come out with a statement. So I said, okay. And her friend in that call, Kyle, um, was there the day of as well. He mentioned, I told her that day, I was like, as a woman, if this is your story, you should be able to tell it, right? I was fine with her, the, tw the twit longer, fine, right. She was going to write a twit longer. And I asked her if she thought that Slick raped her or sexually assaulted her. At the time, she said no. So I said, okay, could you include that in your twit longer then? And she said, okay. She still wanted to tell her whole story. She said everything that happened that night in that twit longer. She wrote, to be clear, he did not rape or assault me, but his actions did make me uncomfortable. She showed me it, and I said, thank you for including that, because I didn't want added speculation to what was happening with Slick. I didn't think of it as a rape or honestly, I didn't think of it as a sexual assault at the time, the way we were talking about it, what had happened. And she said that she didn't feel like it was like that. And was there a power dynamic in that situation? Because I'm a bigger streamer, yes. And I feel bad about that. It wasn't my intention to introduce that to the situation. I wasn't trying to impose that on her. I wasn't trying to pressure her, you know, or like force her into saying something, but did it naturally exist? Yes, but all I went there for was to ask her if she had been raped or sexually assaulted. She said no. I asked her if she can include that, and that's like pretty much all that, th that happened. I am gonna show these <laughs> because I think that it helps a little bit. This is from when it had happened, July 6th, I asked if she was okay. She said, yeah, she's hanging in there. I said, I'm fine. Um, thank you for talking to us today. I'm sorry, talking to us being me, Mitch. Um, and I said, I'm sorry for what happened with Slick. I know what it's like to be assaulted, feel triggered, blah, 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 blah. Um, To deal with those feelings in the public eye is a lot. Um, and she said, thank you so much for helping me with this. It's just a lot of anxiety. I was there with her while she was writing it, but it was, I'm not like holding a gun to this girl's head. I'm not like trying to pay her off. I'm not blackmailing her into saying what I want her to say. That's where that ended. Or we talked about what had happened. I asked if she was going to share a story, if she could include that. She did. She showed it to me. She tweeted it. I did not know how much it's affected her um, at this point in her, or like for this long in her life. I didn't know that Slick messaged people every time she hung out with somebody um, to get her to get blacklisted. I moved out of that house a couple months after this had happened. I'm sorry for inserting myself into any of this in the first place. I'm sorry for what it's done to Adriana, truly. Like, I, I will talk to Adriana um, off stream about this as well. I am sorry um, about what's happened because of it. Um, I've been very separated from all of that for a very long time now. Um, I've just been like living by myself, you know, doing my own thing. The, the gist of it is I woke up, we all thought that we were gonna, that Slick was gonna be, you know, gonna have to move out and, and that everything was ending. Slick was my best friend at the time. I went over to try to figure out what happened. We talked about what happened. I wanted to clear up what happened and I asked if she could include that it wasn't rape or sexual assault because at the time she said that it wasn't, but she wanted to share that it made her uncomfortable and she wanted to share her story. She did, but that was the end of it. And I'm sorry for the power dynamic that was naturally put in place there. I'm sorry for saying that everything would be okay. Genuinely thought that it would be. I, I didn't know that Slick messaged people. I don't have control over the social scene like that. You know, like I don't, I don't have control over like who gets invited to everything and like who hangs out and who's they're like blacklisted. And you know, I, I don't have control over that, but I'm sorry um, that it 
turned into that. That's my side of it. Again, I'm not here to defend anybody. I, I'm just trying to explain to you what, what happened that day. I just want everybody to understand that I'm not there like blackmailing or holding a gun to her head or saying like, don't tweet this, tweet, th-, you know, like I, I wasn't, I don't feel like I forced anyone into anything. And I'm really, I'm just like, God, I, did, I feel really bad. <laughs> like I feel really, really bad. Um, and this sucks and I wish I was never involved in it and I wish I never went over there. I wanna say that I meant well for everyone involved and that's just like, I know that's a lot to say and I know it sounds stupid. I'm sorry for, for everything. And I, it's just like so unfair that she's gotten um, roped into these situations multiple times. Like the first time how it happened and this time and that it's, un- it's unfair that her career has been affected by it. It's unfair that her social life has been affected by it um, because you know, she's, she's a victim in all in this situation. Um, and it's all very sad and very unfortunate. And I'm just really sorry that I was ever involved and that I contributed, um, to, that I contributed to, to her suffering. So after all of this came out, things were looking very bad for Miskiff, to the point where his streaming network, OTK, had to release a statement about this. They tweeted out to the OTK community. When OTK was formed nearly two years ago, we strived to create a gaming organization that embodied our values as creators, gamers, and individuals. Yesterday evening, a series of clips and content surfaced relating to one of our founders. Due to the seriousness of what's been brought forward, we have begun the process of contracting a third-party legal organization to investigate the issue in detail. In the meantime, Miskiff has been placed on leave and will be stepping away from his organizational duties pending the results of the investigation. OTK strongly condemns sexual harassment, assault, and bigotry of all forms. We appreciate your support and patience during this time and will provide updates as we receive them. Keemstar reacts to this by saying, Miskiff is one of the founders of OTK, so how is he taking a leave? How do you take a leave of something you own? Also, they claim there's a third party investigation? How can you even make that claim without explaining who the third party is? STOP GASLIGHTING US! Earlier, Keemstar also tweeted out the chat logs of Miskiff reacting to the initial callout post by Trainerx. It starts out with Miskiff saying, That tweet he put makes it look so weird, but it really looks way different, lol. I'm talking to Train, he's talking about Slick. Should we keep going? When Maya and Mitch went over to talk to Adriana Lee, no, he's talking about Slick. Is he talking about Slick? I think when Slick got attacked, I don't even know what he means. Look at my reply, laughing emoji. Clearly the debt has nothing to do with Slicker. Not the place to be if you don't want to drink though. Nice Servissa, saved. If you're looking at my logs, Titterside asked what nin she would use, but it failed. Minx was using manipulation. Estes. I think this will last about three more day. Minx would have just been a shouting match. Hassan was getting close. He would have left. It would have been GG. If I just shit on Slicker, and most streamers especially don't understand, it's the one thing I'm good at. It's really that simple. People don't understand how to talk to people. So I can't really understand the context of everything he's saying here, but it seems like his initial reaction to him getting called out for covering up his friend's essay is not to take it too seriously. All of these messages seem very lighthearted. Anyways, Keemstar continues tweeting when he says, Hassan, Piker, and Pokey are responsible for covering up all the Twitch crimes. Retweet if agree, according to one Reddit user. I'm drunk, leave me alone. Pokey lied, people died. He then shows this cute image of Miskiff and his girlfriend Maya next to an older couple who took a similar picture. Keemstar also tweeted out a picture of Hassan in a dress in a jail cell and says, Consequences are happening. Is Harvey Weinstein your role model, Miskiff? Ladies and gentlemen, this Twitch drama is now resulting in every major Twitch streamer being exposed for doing something horrible. We must now call this Poggergate. Kavos says, I hate the main group of Twitch streamers, just full of fake people and fake friendships. Among Us was the height of this cringe. People begging to be friends with the most popular people just so they could get in their lobby slash streams and videos. Was so transparent. I think even Jack Septicai said a lot of them weren't friends off stream. Pay Money Wubby says, TwitchCon gonna be wild this year. John Zerka shows a picture of an empty room and says, TwitchCon 2022. The point Train and X are trying to make is that you should never instinct Actually dismiss and downplay a crime from someone who already admit that they did it. Trainwrecks and XQC are heroes. Mudahar says, In seriousness, Twitch gambling is a point of itself, but this whole cover-up of sexual assault is enraging to hear. If true, everyone needs to pay for it. Truly fucked up shit. Nico Lal says, The Poggers community is in shambles. I Will Dominate says, Watching the entire streaming platform burn from our tiny league corner. The Actman says, If you were gonna accuse someone of sexual assault, you should probably do that as soon as possible. Instead of 
of waiting for a convenient moment to capitalize on the drama. But what do I know? I'm only referring to content creators, streamers, etc. Because sometimes this shit is used for clicks and all that. Don't get me twisted. I'm saying watch out for the grift. Hassan posts a snake emoji in response to all of this. But that's not as good as Amran's reaction to this. That Lord Vega posted onto his Twitter with the caption, Twitch is a different dimension, I swear to God. Why do you do it now? That is a cop-out. It is a cop-out, and it is moving away from the main point, which is her story. And that's no, I, I, I agree. We are, we have completely moved, and we've completely moved beyond the main point, which is something that I have mentioned numerous times at this yeah, point. Yeah, what is the point? And okay. I do agree. We have done that. And I think that's a really shitty way to cover this otherwise potentially criminal subject matter. That is my point. That I also agree with you on, if that's your point as well. Um, okay, as as Adriana comes. also said, though, I, I yes, the tweet wording was vague, which is the reason why we did not know. And Adriana, if you want further clarification, like we talked about yesterday, I'm so on stream, confused. Speaking of being confused, I'm personally very confused why Miskiff was being so racist in DMs with Ice Poseidon back in 2018. Ice Poseidon tweets these out with the caption, Miskiff, I brought you into this world and now I'm taking you out. The DMs start out with Ice Poseidon saying, you all in the RV? To which Miskiff responds, no, we are on the road. I don't know what's going on anymore. I just want a drink. This guy is a Mexican slur. Keep it on the down low. What you want, food wise. Ice responds, just whatever, egg sandwich. Miz responds, can I come over after? These next set of messages start out with Miskiff saying, Oh, door plocks. Yo, there's an N-word in the car. Yo, need you back. Never mind, fixed. Yo, if you ever need to talk or anything, just DM me and I'll answer. The third image of DMs start out with Miskiff saying, Did you get tickets when you had the car in Florida? He responds, I think. How do you get those? Miskiff responds, Because I paid for the car. Can you stop being an F-slur and pay me? Look, we were friends, Paul, but I'm killing it on Twitch. I don't need you. It's over. Just give me the money and let me go. And this last image starts starts out with Miskiff saying, If you don't have a Reddit, yeah, I wouldn't be as much. 100%. Ice responds, Yeah, feels good, man. Miskiff responds, Don't ever say that to me again, F slur. Ice Poseidon responds, I need a cameraman for the butler event. Miskiff responds, Neck, which I assume references killing yourself with a noose. Ice responds, laughing my ass off. Keemstar responds to all of this by saying, Ice Poseidon exposes Miskiff for dropping N-word. Hard R in DMs. Ice is planning to tell the full story on my podcast tomorrow. Miskiff, aka KK KK leader, you were invited onto the show. Narco tweets out, Miskiff moment. Never ask a woman her age, a man his salary. Miskiff who was in his car at 3.12 p.m. on July 2nd, 2018. Gideon tweets out, this man Miskiff said every slur under the sun. Ah, <laughs> Seeing to which burn in these fake ass woke people being exposed is an early Christmas for me. The Boys in the Hood 2 starring Miskiff coming soon. King Richard reacts to this by saying, Another racist large streamer on Twitch? This is so shocking to me to see this type of behavior. Literally in shock, I never would have thought. Now let's see what Twitch does about it. By the way, I'm being sarcastic. Been peeping the racism the whole time, lol. I just couldn't say anything because they have a very powerful position. And will band together blackball and derail anyone who does. Thanks for exposing yourself. Who is Miskiff's close friend group? They need to be examined as well. No way does a person like that fly under the radar with his friends. I'm sure they all knew who he was and said absolutely nothing. Almost every big creator in the industry is completely silent to ongoing issues of hate, racism, and bigotry. Why am I not shocked? I didn't want to come back to streaming just yet, but this shit low-key forcing my hand. Miskiff then finally responds to all of this in a twit longer. It reads out, my statement. Hey guys, to update everyone we found Crazy Slick. He is not harmed himself. After hearing from Adriana and the numerous other women who have shared their experiences with him, it's clear that he is not the person he made himself out to be. In terms of his living situation, Slick has been told to vacate our house as soon as possible. I appreciate and support those who were brave enough to come forward with their stories about his behavior. A little while after Slick's misconduct came to light last year, I made some inexcusable statements on an alt stream after some chat messages got to me, to Adriana and those affected by sexual harassment. I am sorry for those statements. Sexual harassment regardless of degree, can never be considered small. And while my intention was to clarify a misleading chat message, I chose my words poorly and my response came off as downplaying what should never be downplayed. Additionally, a series of private messages from 2018 have been posted, where I said some reprehensible things. I've been open about my past many times on stream, and will address it again here. I was a dumb, edgy guy who said a lot of stupid things to my friends, to try and come off as funny and cool. I can't change what I've said, but I can change who I am now and how I conduct myself. I'm proud of how 
how much I've grown these past four years, but I know that there is always room to improve. I am sorry to everyone affected by this situation. I made bad judgement calls based on what I led to believe, and I deeply regret it. I also want to apologize to OTK, our staff and our partners who put their trust in me every day, to represent our organization in the best way I can. OTK has informed me that the organization is in process of contracting a third party to investigate the actions above. During this time, I will be taking a leave of absence and stepping away from organizational duties. Thank you to everyone who has supported me throughout the past four years of streaming. Knowing that there are people who still look up to me after everything is both a blessing and a responsibility. I know I need to do a better job upholding. I have to. Ms. Miska follows up a statement by saying, I want to make it clear. The harassment is about the Discord logs and comments Slick made towards every girl who came forward. Slick sexually assaulted Adriana, and there's no excuse for it. Her story deserves to be told, and I'm glad she was able to share it fully. Keemstar responds to him by saying, What kind of tweet is this? You were the one saying it was not that big of a deal. You were the one that was downplaying it? Why are you saying you're glad she was able to share it? False. Why would you be glad you got exposed as a fraud? No Nothing TV also responds to Miskiff, reminding everyone of the stream clip from a year ago when Miskiff was initially addressing what his friend Slick had done. Of what you can deem of it, it's sexual harassment, whatever. At a low scale, it's not really a big deal. I don't think people really gave a shit and really cared. Ja, I'm gonna turn this off if you're gonna be like this. I'll just turn it off. Of what you can deem of it, it's sexual harassment, whatever. At a low scale, it's not really a big deal. I don't think people really gave a shit and really cared. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this off if you're gonna be like this. Jelly Peanut says, When did all these virtue signaling narcissistic streamers suddenly become activists? Am I supposed to believe there isn't some type of agenda here and that you actually care? Adriana responds, Realest thing I've heard. Trainrex responds, You know who these people actually are behind the BS. Adriana responds, Exactly, and they still get away with it. Trainrex responds, They won't. Now keep in mind this was before Trainrex called out Miskiff on Twitter to get this whole ball rolling, but afterwards Adriana quote tweets him and says, He wasn't lying. Morgan says, Adriana's defensive ex and train makes so much more sense now. She's basically saying that last year, the sexual assault got swept under the rug. So train and ex used the already existing drama to bring it back up again, so it wouldn't get swept away again. Minx's initial reaction to all of this was tweeting at Miskiff and saying, you gonna call me manipulative in your offline chat, but can't even respond to me on Discord? So as you can tell, Minx is very mad, but not just at Miskiff, but actually Adriana as well. Because according to a stream that she quickly does deleted, not only is she dismissive of Adriana in it, but is also antagonistic against her. And luckily, I have that deleted stream downloaded. She did not reply. <laughs> She doesn't have screenshots. Yes, I'm not kidding. The Twitch streamer Just a Minx was streaming during the same time that Adriana was sharing her story live and reacting to it by laughing and dismissing all of the claims that ended up being true. Which is fucked up in itself, but is even more fucked up considering that she knew about the story and was somewhat involved in the behind the scenes for years at this point. I was here for this and the other girl that was there too. And I heard them out. This is bullshit. So she says it was bullshit, despite everybody else involved saying otherwise, except for the guy being accused, Slick, who backtracked his year old statement, made this new statement, deleted it, and then deleted his Twitter account. But apparently she was there, so let's hear her out and see what she has to say. Check Adrian Elise's stream. She's telling Miz's story. Because knowing this, like, no. as a smaller streamer in Austin, these people have the power to... No. 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 Website. No platform, whatever. Real sexual assault. In this my is life bullshit. Before, right. Like, Twitch or anything. And just the Reddit comments I was getting were absolutely absurd, bro. Like, it's like, Jesus Christ. Like, you guys are allowed to say this? Like, you're allowed to say these things to a woman about a woman? Um, Elaborate? But yeah. Slick is slick. I was here for this. And the other girl that was there too. And I heard them out. This is bullshit. They went out and Slick literally was just himself. And they took it the wrong way. Slick is good. Slick is weird. Yeah, he is weird. But he does it online. Like, he does it. It's always how Slick is. And Adriana is a cloud chaser. So am I. No, it's not even the fact that he's depressed. It's hard to... To visit a lot because I was friends with all these people. And now it's like, I'm just like a social outcast. Why are you fuck. crying so on you, Amigo? He, he tried to Why do all that while you were like, drunk, I'm assuming. Miskiff's circle jerk kind of sucks. It's kind of trashy. 
Yeah, that's why I just do my own thing. These that's days. smart. You no, have 10K, 20K, Andy. Group is shit. Or focusing but don't give it. People that, like, they're, I, uh, what is this? Guess what pops Adriana, up? Adriana, what the fuck you know, is this? He found a way to insert himself into Cypher PK's party. He was you know invited. I mean? After he saw that I was. Do so obviously That's... he's like trying to stop my <laughs> <He> dog. Was... <laughs> intentionally. It's not just like, oh, we, we know the same people. It's like he saw me that I was doing this. My career was stunted because I was reaching personal record views before this whole thing happened, which is like, oh, it could be any situation, but it's just a little funny how I was doing very good before this whole situation happened. It's a little happened. funny. Obviously. How is this when funny? I was told, it's okay, just come out about it so we don't have to kick Slick out. But, you know, things, things kept going. And then people are afraid to be around me. I have never hung out with him since. And listen, hey, it's not his fault. Wait, you it literally have, is though. not his fault. I don't want to stop his bag. I don't want to Wait, be the reason that he on. gets fired or the reason that he, it fucking sucks that I'm this hush-hush word, this hush-hush situation. Nobody can be my friend or be around me without Slick having something to say about it. And a lot of people Wait, who are saying, Adriana Lee, drama whore, whatever, take us well, you take want a break, to hang out with them again. and go read like, the fucking tweet. Hold on now. Because nobody read it. Say apparently. names. Then, um, it's like going out of his way to scare me or intimidate me, as I said. Insert yourself the in more PK drama. Thing. Love him. That's bestie. Chat, I was you know, living very good with guy, very good at the time. Creator. And what the fuck did I do? I fucking fell asleep. He did not. And he, he wants to go around. Well, she tried to apologize to me at a party. She, she go, he goes up to my fucking friends. He went my in. My fucking friends. He checked on her because she was blackout drunk. He went in, checked on her because she was blackout drunk. And her friend told her you were there no i was there for the drama when it happened in the fucking otk house you don't know shit stop fine okay slicker 2.0 but as a woman but hotter um i love i have really a lot of love for john like a good content creator whatever i've known him for a very long time um and he said he like knew about the situation he said listen like i said listen i'm not gonna stop you go to the parties whatever um oh, it's all coming out just know like this is how i feel about it it's something that has hurt me and it is hurting me he goes don't worry adri like uh, you've been there for me since the beginning like we're like yeah john zirka like, is a bitch hey Zirka's john zirka is a bitch or Zirka, whatever takes picture of party if we like in like, everything blah, 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 blah. it's like damn like he it's whatever but it just makes me wonder like what's he wasn't beat. allowed to stay at the house he wasn't allowed to stay at the envy house so he blocked me and he was like i thought you were a real one and i'm like yeah but you made it and drake uncomfortable and then I woke up the next day and he blocked me. Makes you have the right to Insane. not like her. Um, but she's telling her side of the story. It's not about you. Thanks. It's not about um, me. The universal it's problem so here in the way it was so pushed so under the rug. So you're upset about the way in you were the way treated that afterwards. I'm, as I said, about... being <laughs> silenced in my career is being pushed down. I've it talked to lawyers up. about this situation. Go on. I'll battle her in lawyer fucking court. I will. I worked too fucking hard to get to where I am. Coming from fucking nothing. For somebody who hasn't had a fucking job in their motherfucking life. Never filled out a fucking W-2 who's living in a mansion crying. I'm so sad that these rumors are being spread about me. While he's crying in his fucking mansion. He Meanwhile, I had to get two him. fucking jobs just to pay my fucking rent. I've had to do things that I don't want to do. You're a Twitch streamer. That might possibly hurt my fucking reputation. An e-girl. So basically what Shit, she told me I on Discord, and I have proof of here, okay? He then messaged her saying, I'm jacking off right now. Or like, <sighs> something horny. I just remember something to do with jacking off. And she did not reply. <laughs> she doesn't have screenshots. No, he did not, did he? But she didn't entertain the message. So he immediately blocked her. Now can we mount? If anybody knows what <laughs> mounting is. <laughs> what is mounting? To climb a female for. <laughs> what the fuck does this mean? Come. There's probably a lot of streamers, and now that I've oh come God. out about this again, and I have other proof of girls having this experience are going to come out, I, I urge you, if you are a female streamer, to check your chat logs for Crazy Slick and tell me what you find.
All right. Um, there's I also will. a chat log, I think, in mine where he says, I made Katarino. I can make you too. Let me see if I can find it. I made one of the biggest <laughs> girl streamers. Girl Twitch streamers. I got you. Can I come get my bag? I just service? host I'm people just, to hi, make them big. Question mark. Hi. Is this live? Am I live? Hi. If the, if the, um, <laughs> I can't get a good screenshot of it right now, but if the mod is really fast. Okay, I'll, I'll come and miss you. Um, <laughs> also, uh, let me find this. Give me a second. <gasps> We'll come over tomorrow. Chris, <laughs> I'm so cringe. Yeah, but if she actually like knew Slick as a friend, she would know that. Oh god, there's gonna be some people upset here about this one. That's how he is. We literally watched Tom and Jerry meet fucking Seer and Slick lay in a bed together watching Tom and Jerry, and he said the same shit over and over. Stop. He's a weirdo. He's a weirdo. He is a weirdo. I don't disagree with that. You defending him? I'm saying he's a weirdo. I'm just saying Adriana is not the best option to trust. And you are? No, I'm telling you not to trust me either. Hello? I've literally said any opinion I say is literally because I'm manic. But I believe what my brain thinks is right. And I will continue to believe that. Am I right? No, definitely not. What is this? Yeah, he's people, a bit people, weird. People are isn't he? spreading rumors about me. Then what is this? And it's the crazy thing. The craziest thing is. Crazy slick. Andy. <laughs> I get it, because that's the same. Sorry. I can pull people in to a Discord call right now okay. to tell you that I am not just being a oh, crazy drama whore. Oh You're God. a crazy drama whore. In this situation, this has actually been affecting me for a long fucking time. Bring me in. It's ruined my friendships. It's only. But Sound asleep, honk shoe, honk shoe. Covering up. This wasn't the shit. There's a lot of people are like, what is this accusation? See, no, like, I call Pokemon Hassan, XQC, and Miz a bitch last night because they were my friends. Adriana, this is crazy. I'll get Kinsey. Kinsey, call me on Discord. Call we were me. all out on Sixth Street. It was just a normal time. And Miz is there. And I'm like, oh, hey, Miz. Like, good to meet you again. Like, I try to, like, literally just clear. I mean, no, no, no. The air. No. Minx was there. No. He runs away. He runs no. away playful like this. She. We Miz went like, out. Oh, my we God. Went... Get away from me. You tried to cancel my best friend. No, oh, no, 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 no. She literally came out with us. She found a way to come out. This is bullshit. Miz was there? I'm pissed at Miz too. I'm pissed at Miz too. I'm really pissed at him. But we went out and then she just appeared. What? What? Yeah, he she has... spawned in. Trey um... was there? Wait, maybe I wasn't what? there that night. What the fuck? I was there that night, you fucking idiot. This is the thing. It looks I don't like know why Minx myself. is saying, laughing at me and saying I'm not the best option to trust. <laughs> Call me. Let's call Kyle, the person who is there. Y'all are gross, shit. that's why sexual yeah, assault victims don't come out. When they go live or whatever, I don't remember the stream, but they like, totally downplayed it. Nothing really came no. out. Nothing was really no, resolved. No, 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 no. And, you know, Maya had promised, like, you know, this is going to happen. This was an inside you, thing, you know, and this is why. You're not going to look like this is kind of fucked. It stays inside. But Slick literally was checking on her pulse. Mix up showing this, you're fucking I, I stuff mean, over. I, 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 I literally saying, so chopped like, I mean, off my hair. Here? I know I fucked myself over. But if I start saying one thing, it will go into a whole fucking loophole about OTK. So after watching that, I am honestly in complete disbelief of what I just witnessed. I understand that Justaminx has mental issues, but as she has said herself in the past, it's not really an excuse for shitty behavior all the time, but with the stream being deleted and her making tweets saying that she's going to get help, she's clearly trying to make right by this in some way. I do hope that she has privately apologized at this point to both Adriana and Britballs, as those are the people most affected by Minx's actions. 
Americans literally laughing at and dismissing their serious stories of sexual harassment and assault. Another part that is very concerning to me is the fact that she mentioned that this situation with Adriana isn't the only thing Miss Kiff has been covering up, which was something that was also implied by Trainwrecks when he said he was covering up multiple stories, not just one. But in Miss Kiff's statement, he only mentioned Adriana's story, nobody else's. It seems like, surprise, surprise, Miss Kiff is not being completely truthful with his statement. But after clips of Justaminx's deleted stream started to circulate and people started expressing concern for Justaminx's mental health, we got an update posted to her Twitter account by another one of her friends that says, Hello everybody, a lot of you have been concerned by Minx's well-being over the last few weeks, and it seems to have gotten much worse in the last few days. Being manic is not a joke, and should not be treated as clickbait or a punchline, or even an excuse. With help from those around her, Minx has decided to get help and has not been on the internet since Tuesday afternoon, referring to Tuesday the 20th of September. She will not be returning to the internet for a few days, and does not have access to her phone. We know there is a lot going on, but please be patient until she is able to return and speak for herself. Thank you for your continued support. She cares about her community more than any of you could ever know. So that is all we heard from Just a Minx for almost a week. Until last night, she came back with another live stream that yet again got deleted. But thanks to Manny on Twitter, I now have access to the deleted VOD and I can now show you guys what she said in it. Very long story. I shouldn't be live right now. So in advance, I do want to apologize to my org. I also do want to apologize for everyone that advised me not to stream then don't be no because there is an apology fucking owed do i feel bad yeah i have been advised to do a youtube apology video talking about it or writing a script which i probably should have done because knowing me i will fuck up something here so i do want to apologize because i am going on a hike with a lot of people that helped me out tomorrow and i promised them i won't stream but i did eeny meeny miny mo and i watched a video and i want to do it shout out bio blacks that was a really good video okay so I have done several shitty things during my manic episode where it's not okay to ignore them. I just got out of the psych ward today. The tweet that was on my Twitter account was written by Cutie and Danny. I told all my friends and they advised me to do it too. Still pretend that I was in the ward for another week so I could take time off and not look at my phone because they took my phone away. I'm not using my fucking mental illness as an excuse because any oh mental illness God. comes with something oh. deep within you. <laughs> so anything I said was me. So I put on Bao Black's video and I actually watched and listened to what Adriana said instead of manically watching it live on stream. And I'm personally disgusted at myself. Jumped like two fucking stones ahead. But this is why women don't come out with this type of shit. I believed my friends because I was friends with them and I'm wrong because I am an influencer. Even though I always joke, no, I'm not an influencer. I am. People watch me. I forget that I've fucking a few million followers on Twitter and a few thousands that watch me and there's young women out there and it's kind of fucking disgusting what I did. Kind of. It's kind of really disgusting what I did because it's not just Adriana that I hurt. Seeing a woman in the industry stand off for someone that fuck fucking, you know, did that shit is shitty. Is really fucking shitty. I didn't even listen to her. I just started saying cloud chaser because I had one bad experience with her. I wasn't even listening to what she said. I was listening to what all my friends said and that's exactly what she explained. I watched the whole video that Bioblocks put out and I was like, holy shit. And that's why I'm live right now. Because I literally just watched that about an hour ago with Fish and Louie and I was like, I have to go live and actually apologize. I don't want to write a script because I was completely in the fucking wrong. Like, completely. And it's annoying that I have a fucking platform where I can say that shit. All right, you're realizing what you've done? Yeah, I've realized. But a lot of people aren't going to see me saying this. A lot of people are going to see me supporting that. And that's the issue here. And I'm always like, oh, people are fake. People are fake. I don't think that I was fake in that scenario. I think that I just wanted to believe my fucking friends and shit. I'm annoyed at myself. I always took that as a character. Because he always did that from the moment we met. So I'm like, that's just slick. She's overreacting. Come on, are you fucking stupid? But then actually listening and hearing everything. I'm like, fuck me. But I met him on Lover Host. And that was the character. So I was like, oh, come on. He always does that. I don't even want to read the Discord DMs is the thing. 
I don't want to because I'm still, and this sounds horrible, on his side because he was my friend. But I know he's in the wrong and that's the annoying thing. That's the annoying thing about talking about this. He was a fuckhead. But I'm also like, maybe it'll come out that it was a character. Maybe, maybe. But I know it's not. I know, I know you're saying ha. Huh. I know you're saying ha. Huh. I know. I'm hoping that he is. Yeah, I was his friend. We watched Tom and Jerry together, man. But what the truth is, that he's a fucking predator. Oh my god. Using oh. his friend's <laughs> cow to manipulate women. Fine if you don't forgive me, because I fucked up big time. I was a fucking idiot. I was a sheep. I was literally a fucking sheep. We got Noah's Ark leading me. Apologize. Let me just get a fucking dog and start apologizing. Just saying I'm sorry won't fucking work. It's just hard to explain. I know I have young women in my audience. And that's what fucking upsets me the most. That even, even though it was a manic episode, I still said that. And manic episodes still have a part of the real you. Like, real you comes out. So I can't excuse it. Oh no, I was just fucking, uh suicidal and manic it doesn't work like that have you spoken to her and apologized i was going to do it before stream but honestly i'm too ashamed because she housed me when i was stuck in texas she housed me and i said on that stream that she laughed about it and she was like yeah slick is weird and that's why i said on stream or no i will after this stream i will but I'm ashamed. I am really fucking ashamed of myself. You aren't giving yourself time to process. Oh yeah, let me just take a week off and then come back when it's all blown over. That's great. That's a great idea. Like every other content creator. Are you actually on his side? Not after I saw the video. Don't. No, but chat, this is why I'm here. I'm going to be taking a break after this. But I wanted to fucking not run away from her problems and come back and then be like, Haha, it's all blown over now because I was in the fucking wrong. Okay. Calling out chat. I'm in fucking stream mode. I don't remember the last three streams, honestly. I was manic at the end of my rope and shit. Not an excuse. But I was saying anything that came to mind. And I was influenced by friends to believe that what happened to Adriana was smaller than what it actually was. And not only influenced my friends, because I could have been like, really? I could have questioned them on that. And I didn't. I was like, ah, oh, shit, okay, she's crazy, yeah, she's a clout, I just believe that. And that's embarrassing for me. I talk about fake people all the time. What the fake is- I really don't know what to say. I don't know what to say and that's why I'm fucking stalling and trying to make jokes about all this and keep distracting from the main issue at hand because this is a serious thing because women in this community, that happens a lot and they're too scared, like scared to fucking speak up about it because of shit like this. Exactly what Adriana said. They will get cut out. They will fucking be pushed aside. It'll be like, eh, it's just, it's just, <laughs> just sexual harassment. <laughs> they didn't rape her, so it's all okay. I'm literally just fucking quoting what Miz said, which is actually fucked. I think I just wanted to go live to actually properly say I'm fucking sorry. To any like young women out there that watches my stream, any young men, anyone that has been sexually assaulted, touched in any fucking way, you should speak up. Not everyone's a fucking dickhead like these fucking streamers that cover it up, aka me and OTK. Ooh, should not have said that one. Fuck, should not have said that one. Minx, you promised not to go live? I promised to Optic. Shout out, Optic. Love you guys. Shout out. So that's basically the gist of what she said in the stream, and I know it's not my apology to accept, as I am not Adriana or someone who has been a victim of sexual assault, and obviously I don't forgive her fully as her reaction to Adriana was pretty abhorrent and she kind of agrees with that herself, so if you don't want to hear me give any leniency to Minx, you can stop watching the video right here. I honestly wouldn't blame you for it, and I still think people who continue to be mad at her are justified. But through this stream I might be being tricked, but I felt a lot of genuine genuineness and honesty to a level that I don't really see creators do in this industry, especially with issues this serious. If you've been watching my coverage of the situation up until now, it seems like everyone other than Adriana themselves, and maybe Trainrex, have some level of dishonesty baked into the statement due to trying to be professional and not risking their career. Like we see Miskiff make this PR twit longer statement that is just complete bullshit. We see other streamers like Maya just making these 
these little pocketed statements hoping that it will subside the backlash they're getting. While they might be being genuine in those statements to some extent, the primary focus in most of these statements that I see in this situation and in others is self-preservation and brand preservation. We even see some of that being imposed onto Minx in this stream by her friends and associates, like the recommendation to do a scripted YouTube apology, or her organization Optic saying to not stream about this anymore, or her mods encouraging her to end the stream, despite her not really saying anything morally wrong in it. Okay, I'm gonna call my mods. Everything's gonna be okay, but I need you to end stream. New idea. What? I s Can you turn off emote on me? People can fucking shit on me right now. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. No, I won't end. Because the more tired I get, the more truth that comes out. I don't- I've never talked no, to- No, Zach, I won't. I will unmod all of you right now if you don't fucking turn off emote only. Like, I 100% understand people wanting Minx's first deleted stream to be ended as she was saying horrible things about Adriana that was just not acceptable. But here in this stream, she's trying to apologize and while she might not be doing that great of a job, you can see the genuine attempt to make this right. And the only thing really said on stream that could be seen as so bad that it shouldn't be aired is implicating all of OTK as a whole in the cover-up rather than just missing which could mean all of the members, but is probably more referencing the behind the scenes management and staff of the org. But regardless if it's true or not, it's still such a slimy and selfish reason to want Minx to end her apology stream just because she might leak some stuff that makes you look bad. Again, it goes back to the whole self-preservation thing. I think all of the people around Minx, and maybe even Minx herself, don't have morality as their absolutely number one priority and prioritize brand preservation over that. So when Minx has a manic episode, and all of that truth becomes apparent through her manic state, everyone else around her who isn't manic and does prioritize self-preservation is getting her to shut up. And the fact that someone had to have a manic episode in order for a crack of honesty and genuine remorse to break through the brand prioritizing barrier that encompasses the entire Twitch community is just honestly so telling and makes me wonder how many more dark secrets these Twitch streamers might be hiding. And the fact that she got convinced that deleting this VOD was the right move is it's just sad to see because it's the most honest I've ever seen a streamer be, at least in my opinion. But maybe I'm being way too lenient on her. I do have bias in the fact that I have personal experience with manic family members and mental health in general, so that could contribute to me being a little bit too forgiving. But ultimately, it doesn't really matter what I think, as that stream was for Adriana and any other SA victims who watched Just a Minx and were hurt by her actions. Alright, so a lot more people have went onto their live streams to talk about the Miskiff Crazy Slick Adriana Lee SA cover-up, you might know that one of Miskiff's current roommates, Mitch Jones, actually went with Miskiff's at-the-time girlfriend Maya to Adriana Lee's house in order to get her to downplay the initial twit longer she would release about Slick. Mitch Jones made a live stream going in-depth on what happened before and during that visit to Adriana's house. Here is what he said. I'm gonna tell my full truth of this. I'm really stressed out right now because I feel like this whole situation has been weaponized or something and it's like really... I don't know, like my- my- honestly my heart hurts in all of this because all I ever wanted was justice, uh, for Adriana Lee. You know, I reached out to her to try and help her because after the situation had happened, I- you know, if- if you felt like you were downplayed in any way, I don't want that to be the case. I'm involved in this because I am the one that went to her after the fact and was like, hey, I think that there was an issue here and I gave her the contact information to Train, right? And then Train has been helping her with this, you know, obviously uh, this has all unfolded, right? Like this whole situation is honestly just so fucking sad, man. And I don't know who I can trust and I feel very alone. I feel like I'm being used as a guinea pig. I'm honestly scared, man. Like, and all I tried to do was help this fucking poor girl and I feel like I'm terrified. I'm actually fucking terrified. Maya, I believe, woke me up that day. There were, there were some accusations against Crazy Slick, and I, apparently Novaru was the one who leaked it initially, and then Adriana was forced to make a statement because Novaru had basically talked on her behalf. Maya had woken up Miz, and we, and then I was also woken up, and then we were all standing there, and we were like, okay, what, like, what are we gonna do? Who decided to go and sit down in a room, in a bedroom somewhere, to, like, make a plan? Yeah, I mean, that was Miz's idea to, like, 
create a plan of like what we're going to do. What was said during that like sit down, let's go to Adriana's house. Okay, Maya was trying to get Adriana's side of the story. Maya and I both wanted to see if you know Slicks and Adriana's stories added up. Because at that point in time, uh, everyone in, in our house had just had the info of Slick, right? So, But we knew that something was wrong and that he fucked up. But like, we wanted to hear her side of the story just to see like what he did wrong or whatever. And that, uh, when we were in the room, is what we were discussing at first. Obviously, Miz, you know, was like very worried that his best friend was going to get kicked out. And like he was feeling like very much so affected by it. Like he was like worried about about Slick or whatever. Told Maya, like, you're Maya Higa. Like, you know who you are. And he told me also to not say shit he was like mitch you're an idiot don't fucking don't say shit and i'm like okay and my only intention going over there was to figure out what her side of the story was i had i just wanted to hear her talk i had nothing to say to her other than that and so you're saying was there malicious malicious instruction from Miz? is what you're asking me i think that Miz was looking out for slick's best interest in that scenario if does that answer the question i think it beats around the bush but i mean like straight up like just shoot it real Okay. Do you feel like it was kind of malicious or not? I wouldn't use the word malicious. I do think that Miz is like the leader of th that house and shit. And I think that he definitely knew that he was telling Maya that she knew her strengths and she knew what she could do or not do. But you know what I mean? She, she knew that it was like a woman to woman thing. I can't be in Miz's head and know his intentions. But all I know is from what I thought and what it looked like, I guess, yes, it looked like that. Yeah, it was me, Barry and Maya that walked in that room it was mainly maya and adrian and lee talking all right well, how did that conversation go they were speaking about what was happening and the reason that i felt like there was a weird like weirdness in the air was because i could tell that the guy kyle was like alluding because obviously he was an eyewitness of the account i could tell that he was alluding that you know she shouldn't change her statement at all you know what i mean like it just seemed to me like it was he was like no you should leave that in and like i don't think she knew what happened to her if that makes sense i think that she was passed out or whatever and someone else was an eyewitness of what happened and that's when i felt like uncomfortable i was like oh shit like this is like a big deal and i honestly don't even want to be here anymore and that's when i went outside and i was just fucking playing with the dogs Maya wanted um, Adriana's side of the story, but do I think that Maya is capable of gaslighting someone into downplaying a sexual assault? No, I don't think she's capable of that. Was I there for it all? No, I wasn't. So I guess Adriana Ali's word would matter a lot more than mine here, right? All I know is after all of this happened, I felt extremely fucking weird. And I was like, okay, this, is, this whole situation is strange as fuck. I didn't want to be associated with any sort of business of this being, you know, downplayed or anything like that, right? So I reached out to Adriana and I was like, look, I do not want to play any part of you not saying your story. If you felt like you were strong-armed or, you know, anything into not saying your full truth, then I want to personally help you get, you know, get justice, right? And that is what I did. This was like a week or two after I think I saw her somewhere and that that is what happened. And this is how... Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that she got in contact with Train. I don't know if I don't know if Barry had spoken to Train beforehand about it or if she had spoken to Train, but I'm pretty sure this is how she got in contact with Train. I just felt like a, a grody and gross because I was even there. I don't think us going there was like the the correct thing to do. I know that Maya's intentions were just to get her side of the story, and those were also my intentions, but. Either way, it still could look as though there was like some sort of like power dynamic and uh, like us going there because we live, you know, Maya, Miz, like lived with Crazy Slick. It just looks weird. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like there was some orchestration to downplay the scenario? I know you said that. Uh, yes, I felt really I felt as though she felt scared to say her full truth just because we were there. And that's why I reached out to her after the fact, because I felt bad. Yes, I don't I don't know if there was any downplaying. She also told me that she felt like Slick was, you know, blackballing her from parties and stuff like that. And I told her like straight up like. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you say you said she felt bad about the situation. Did she feel bad about the situation because she felt like it was blown out of proportion or do you or did she feel bad about the situation because she felt like she was kind of put into a corner? Yeah, exactly. She felt like she didn't get to say her full truth. And I think she was scared of of the influence of Ms. Kiff in pseudo reference. I do think that, yes. Did Ms. explicitly give direction to you and Maya and fucking whoever the fuck else was in that room to go to Adriana's house and to quote unquote 
downplay the situation or find a way to save Slick's ass? Yes or no? The answer to that is yes. It's just like, that's not easy for me to say at all, but that that is the answer. Yeah. Fuck, man. Yeah, I get it, bro. I, of course, it's not fucking easy. And the thing is, you know, I had a private conversation with her yesterday, like just me and her, and she was just saying like how thankful she was that I helped her get this story out. And she started crying her eyes out, saying how she felt so excluded from like so many things. And she felt like she wasn't able to like party and like all this other stuff. And she was literally. Right, well, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let's talk about that. So you're talking about from the time that after after you guys went to her house and had this whole conversation with her, she felt like she was getting blackballed from like all the parties and yes all the hangs, she, yes or? she felt like she was getting blackballed from all the parties and all of that shit and i just had a private conversation with her yesterday where she was like s- telling me how much that affected her and like it made me really sad to hear that she kept she was saying to me that she was feeling suicidal over all of this this situation is very fucked up and honestly i'm probably like i'm probably gonna get kicked out of my house you know what i mean like it's all good i'm just trying to say the fucking truth and my piece of everything and that's it how do you feel like she was getting blackballed from all the parties or, or I feel I, I don't feel Miz had anything to do with any blackball in any parties or anything like that. I don't okay. Miz I don't think had any involvement in that at all zero. I think Slick acted on his own accord. Slick probably would like waddle waddle into Miz Kiff's room and use his account to like fucking do weird shit. Like I don't know. I don't think that Miz was a part of any blackballing of this girl in the community. I feel like I should clarify the exact words that Miz said, like again, because people can make their own interpretation of that, correct? Clarify it. What were the exact words that were said? The exact words that were said were like, Maya, you are Maya Higa. You know who you are. You're a woman. She'll listen to you. Not like, like maybe listens to the wrong word, but you know what I mean. She, like, d- d- does that make any sense? Those were, those were along the lines. And then he, t- and then he looked at me and he was like, Mitch, you should shut the fuck up and not say a goddamn thing. And that was that. Do you feel like your conversation with Adriana after that visit you had to her house was an honest conversation. Yeah, I do. Th- I do feel like she felt intimidated by me. But the thing is, like our relationship grew over time and then she started to trust me. And that's when I connected her to train. Even to this day, I feel like um, I'm in a like a, the shittiest position ever because it's, I have to say the truth. But the truth directly like impacts people that I care about. You know what I mean? I guess I'm just going to end with the fact that like, I really feel as though this whole situation has been sort of like weaponized in a way. And that also makes me feel disgusting. Like I probably shouldn't say that, but like, that's how I feel. All right. So that's about it for Mitch's stream. Next up, we have Emeru's statement on all of this. As she is a part of Miss Kiff's organization, OTK, and has lived with both Miss Kiff and Slick for the last 10 months in the same house. Here is what she said about everything. I felt like I had to go live and like say my peace and my experiences since, you know, I've lived here. Did not see a scenario where it was possible for me to go back to streaming as normal without doing that. As of today, Slick is gone. He, he is gone. And he's never coming back, obviously. I don't think it needs to be said, but what he did is abhorrent. As a girl myself, obviously, being through shit like that, it was just really hard to see. I mean, obviously, I'm sure everyone here knows, but for people who maybe don't, yes, Slick was my roommate, and I've been living with him for about 10 months now. And I honestly considered him one of my good friends. When the original situation happened, it was before I moved in, right? But I did hear about it when it first came out. When I first heard about it, my initial thought was, that shit is horrible, like, I can't associate with that. But what changed my mind was, for the duration of my friendship with him, there were a lot of times that he would talk to me and say that his greatest fear was being canceled. (laughs) And I would always say to him, you fucked up back then. You shouldn't have done that, but you know, you say like she said it was okay. And we both know that you're a respectful person who wouldn't say things like that to girls. And he'd always say to me, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't do that. I just feel completely lied to and like the person that I knew never existed after seeing those screenshots. 
Especially considering that I myself am obviously a girl and would talk to him about things that have happened to me and he would let me say stuff like that to him. Meanwhile, be sending things like that to other girls. I just don't know if I've ever felt so betrayed <laughs> in my life by a friend. It's bad enough that he did that shit to Adriana and that those logs existed in the first place, but what makes it so much worse to me is that he got what, in my opinion, was an undeserved second chance, and he just continued acting the same way. Even just like a week ago during his subathon, he just didn't care and didn't try. Seeing that shit happen to other people, especially coming from someone that I was in close proximity with. I mean, you guys know that I moved here to get away from a predator and I ended up living with one, unbeknownst to me, for 10 months. I do want to say though, I've never felt unsafe living in this house, and you guys know that. Simply Russell, Miz, they've never done anything that ever made me feel uncomfortable or like they didn't respect my boundaries or anything like that because a lot of people have been asking that so I just wanted to say that. I've been getting a lot of comments and DMs as well that have been expecting me or pressuring me to leave OTK, to leave everything. As of right now, I'm, I'm not leaving. It's not a coincidence that when I was dealing with my own shit that they were there for me and propped me up and I know firsthand more than anyone that they take my well-being very seriously. Seriously, not just me, but all, all of the girls around here and in this sphere and that work for them. As an org, they've always been very supportive of me and the way that they've been handling this. I, I know you guys don't know everything that's happening and there's a lot of speculation, but the way that they've been handling this is super reassuring to me and it makes me feel very safe. They prioritize my well-being and that's why I'm here. It's hard, but I truly believe in the good of the people around me and that all of the times that they supported me and were there for me were real. I genuinely believe that. From an outward perspective, it seemed like they would literally castrate someone for you. That is true. And not just for me, but for other people around here. And I, I can vouch for that so hard. With the people that I know, if they knew the full story, this whole thing would have gone completely differently. This would have never happened. I've lived with Miz for 10 months and I've hung out with him pretty much every day since I got here. The Miz that I know would never know the full story and just let that happen. There's just no way that he knew. I'm sorry. That's just not the person that I know. He has always been there for me whenever something horrible happened to me without me even having to ask. And I know that's not just true for me, but for other people. He was there for me when we were in Busan and I was sexually assaulted. Been there for me whenever I've wanted to vent about something that has happened to me in the past. And the, the picture that's been painted is not the person that I know. So according to Emeru, she believes that Miz isn't that bad of a guy and just got tricked by Slick in the same way she was tricked by him. Normally, we wouldn't be able to verify the validity of that as Miskiff opted to take the route of responding in a PR twit longer that didn't really give us any information. But luckily, there was a private call that was actually leaked between Miskiff, the guy who initially called him out to start all of this train wrecks, another member of OTK, Asmongold, Mitch, who lives with Miz and was obviously there during the visit to downplay Adriana's story, as well as the person who took them there and also witnessed the conversation with Adriana, who isn't a content creator and his name is Barry. The only version of this call we have is Destiny reacting to it, so you'll be seeing him playing Factorio on screen for the duration of this call, but with all that being said, here's Miss Kiff's behind the scenes private call testimony to what happened. I remember the whole day. Oh, it was man. one of the scariest days of my lives. My best friend in the whole world, Slick, people are saying he's about to get canceled. I yeah. run in his room, Maya's crying, I'm freaking the fuck out, I'm hyperventilating. Mitch is there, we're all trying to figure out what the fuck we can do for my best friend, right? I care about Slick, I fucking do, I love the guy. People were telling us, mainly Barry, that yo, Adriana Lee's about to come out with some shit, because Novaru, she went out and tried to say some stupid ass shit and accusations about Slick. I am freaking out, and I'm literally crying, because I'm saying to myself, I'm gonna lose my best friend. I'm gonna lose my my best friend in the entire world, Maya's upset, Mitch is sitting there, we're all freaking out. I try to get answers. I try to get, what is Adriana Lee thinking? What is going on here? What's happening to my best friend? I, I wanted to know. Were you there happening? that night, Mez? The party? No. Barry calls us, finally, after Mitch's spam calling. Mitch, is this is all accurate so far, right? Yeah, well, Barry was the only reason that we were able to get a hold of her because he was right. friends with, he was friends with, uh, what the fuck is her name? Kyle and Anna. Barry, then, from there, he, mm -hmm. uh, said to us, yo, Slick's done. 
And I'm like, he wouldn't really give us a good description. He's like, Slick's done. It's over. Adriana is fucking saying that this shit's bad. It's done. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck does that mean? And Barry yeah, kind of yeah. hung up and Adriana didn't, we didn't get a hold of them pretty much ever. I didn't go because you know why I didn't go? I knew that if I went train, it would have looked immediately like a power play because it would have. If I went there and I was sitting there at, you know, 30K Andy against these people, it's going to look like a power play and it's going to look bad. The reason you why I said Maya so <sighs> is because Maya is much more liked people respect her and I, I feel like Maya can talk to these girls because I want to know what the fuck went on with my best what? friend. I care. I really Ms. care. Ms. And I was willing to lose pause. Like that Just day. pause real quick. Know. No, pause real quick. Okay. I need you to hear what you just said. Do you understand sending Maya because she's liked, trusted, and a girl, you don't understand how much worse that that, that is. If okay. I sent myself as a 30,000 viewer streamer. Mitch and your through. girlfriend, it's an extension of yourself. And it's even worse because now it's under the guise of trust. Well, it, so here's what happened. Mitch got there. Mitch was basically there. And he, uh, from what I've heard, he just played with the dog. If you want to know, like. The real thing, I like witnessed it all. Three witnesses that what Slick did was true. And basically what happened when I brought Maya and uh, Mitch there, Mitch was just acting like stupid Mitch. His dumbass. Time. Yeah. Well, uh, he, he wasn't like, it was basically Maya gaslighting Adriana the whole time. Basically saying, are you sure this is what Slick did to you? You're pretty drunk. You wouldn't remember it. Are you sure? That doesn't sound something like slick would do we know slick and then she was like if you tweet longer crazy slick this won't be good for your streaming career you won't yes. be and then they were telling her what to write in the tweet longer so it wouldn't look bad for crazy slick i was there the entire time i watched the entire so, thing so train what does that have to do with me because you're willing to throw anyone under the bus and then you give me the excuse that you no, want to save no, crazy slick Bro, I did want to save Chris. Like, that at was the my house, was to make sure Mitch Chris told me, was okay. and I know Mitch is going to have a hard time doing this because he's with you right now, which if you're how you are, you know, it's going to be tough to do this. But like, he told me that you said, you're like, listen, Maya, you need to go there and use who you are on Twitch to get him to write something less. You no, wanted no, that. We had no idea what was going to happen. No, it's the same thing that you that you just said, Matt. Like where you were like, you know, like I knew Maya was like liked or whatever. You yep. said, yeah. I mean, it's just it's literally that you said that exactly. Yep. Like because I knew for a fact that Adriana was not going to give me any information because she wasn't talking to Mitch. She didn't want to talk to either of us. And Maya is someone that's actually like you think someone that has gone through it herself would go over to another victim's house and down talk them none of this makes sense and what mitch told me directly they were sent to that house by any means possible by you this 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 story that you just wanted to do it innocently and you just wanted to get information that is such that, bullshit train 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 you didn't, didn't you're, you're 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 making a narrative you're twisting it i said he's my <laughs> best friend and i want to make sure that he's okay I, I did want to make sure that, that was a thing. He's my best fucking friend. Sense. I did not send anyone to write the twit longer. Adriana's her own human being, and she can completely write what she wants. I did you not just send anyone said to go write Slick the is your longer. own is your best friend, right? It's not Maya's right? best friend. It's not Mitch's best friend. It's your best friend. So you, you're telling me right? Maya and Mitch went out of their own will to go over there, and for your best friend, they decided to have Adriana with threats backpedal on her what twit threats? you also said blackmail train what blackmail that's what blackmail is it's it won't be good for your career what what it threats? won't be good I for your career you think i said that i never said that. you don't need to say I it you sent said people that. there no, to I say it for you any, i never said anyone to go over there and say then why are maya why are maya and mitch doing that for your best friend does that make any sense to anybody or you they're they're best friends with him too don't act like oh maya they're best friends with him oh yeah maya are you guys not very close to slick i'm friends with slick yeah for sure he said he said best yeah he just said he's not best friends with him no, train. We care he just about, said like, it. Maya cares a lot about Slick. Maya lived with me and Slick. I see you doing what you did to Adriana right now to Mitch. I see you doing it no, to me I in the didn't, DM. I didn't do anything. Mitch is scared to talk. I hear it. I hear it in Mitch's voice. I'm scared to talk because I feel like I'm put in the middle of a situation. To think that I wasn't ready to lose Slick is you're out of your mind. If Maya went there and said, yeah, I talked to Adriana and she's like, Slick 100% did what she did. I don't even remember what he did. But if she said that... I was ready to lose Slick. Barry and, and Mitch, like, is that is that an accurate summary? Maya gaslit her pretty fucking hard. Dude. See, I didn't hear I that was because I was, you I was outside. I was outside, dude. Oh I listened to the whole thing, man. It was, it was like, kind of shocking. She was like, are you sure that happened? You were drunk. You wouldn't remember it, right? That doesn't sound like crazy Slick. And then saying, like, if you tweet longer slick this will not be good for your streaming career you won't be invited anywhere stuff like that and she was like saying it like are you sure maya said that i really can't picture maya saying that yeah okay. i remember it train 
if your best friend was possibly losing his entire life and career, would yeah. you not try to send somebody to try to understand what happened? Listen, I sent you... Maya there, and I think uh. I did nothing wrong by sending Maya and Mitch there because I wanted to know the situation, and I wanted Slick to be okay. Now, do I did I tell Maya, hey, say all that stuff? No. I don't believe Maya said that, but if she did, I never would say that. Hey, by the way, this can make your career weird. Train, you know I'm smart. <laughs> I would never say to someone to do that. So, no, I didn't <laughs> You know what you just admitted right there? Oh, my God. This... What, what did I admit? You know you're smart. You never say it. Yeah. So you're saying you didn't say it so you could say you didn't say it but you knew what okay, you were well, doing by sending, sending them i don't know what you're saying at this point you're saying saying as train, 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 please listen. bro i sent maya there and mitch <laughs> to try to mend the situation because all i knew from barry is that slick's done we had no context slick was sitting there depressed as shit barely talking how much did you guys even know going into it nothing dude and that's why i wanted maya to go you didn't know directly that he did something that was bad you just kind of assumed that it didn't happen no as when i assumed it did happen i i was assuming that maya would slick mitch were gonna go there find out what happened well, and that slick, kept, going put, to be slick over. kept denying that anything like wrong happened slick was remember? not talking to us slick was speaking i kept asking him nothing happened like you're not gonna make me look like an idiot right he claimed that nothing happened and that's what we were going off of because all we had was that and whatever Novaru said on stream and then Adriana wasn't talking to to us and but she was talking to Barry through Kyle and that that's what happened right Barry yeah all I know is you guys called me and asked if I could get you there, and I said, yeah. So let me get this straight. You wake up in the morning, and Adriana wants to come out about Crazy Slick. So your yep. instant reaction, as innocent good guy Miskiff is, let me send Maya, a trusted and liked girl that can be trusted and related to, over to the house of Adriana. But wait, how do we get there? Mitch, can you find a way to get to Adriana's house? He goes, yeah, let me call Barry. So then they get mm -hmm. connected. They go over there. And you want to claim to me the day that she wants to come out, you send two people to her house to quote unquote, get more information. And then out of your hands, they acted on free will to go and threaten on your behalf, Adriana, to write a lesser version of the twit longer for no reason at all, all because you believe Slick did do it, but he was your best friend and you wanted to play it right. Yes, I was ready to lose Slick that day, and yes, that He's is He's doing all the true. same line I would again. never have a rape victim undermine what she did or said. Then, on... then wait for the tweet if you want information. Why are you going? No. Why are you going before yeah. the tweet comes out? Because we didn't know anything. We we barely even knew that there was a. That's not your business to know. That was. But that's not your business to know. When your best friend is getting canceled, man, I'm sorry you want to act. I'm sorry you just want to act. That He's act my is best inappropriate. Friend, and I care. The act and is inappropriate. My best friend was getting fucking canceled. Emotions were in it the air. It doesn't matter. He committed a crime. I don't care if your best friend's getting canceled. Yeah, Why do you okay, keep bringing that up and you feel pity? You, man. You, you have a best friend. You want to know what happened. You want to know the answers. There's what? Like there's anything Asmin, wrong with that. please remove your bias and tell me hearing this isn't crazy to you. He's justifying by saying it's his best friend. What the fuck are you saying right now? Your excuse is it's your best friend. That is what I'm saying is wrong about it. You should not be involved. It if it's your best friend, you remove yourself. You don't I think act. that like if you use him as your best friend, people are easily going to say that you're helping some person and it's like effectively a uh, cover up. I, was I wasn't there to help him. And I, I wasn't. I wasn't there to. You were there to remove. Let me ask. As I was, we wanted to know the story, Train. You it's could just DM her. You could have Maya no, DM her. No, we did, Train. We she, called she, her 12 she times. She didn't respond. That's what she, she said. Then you leave her alone. Oh she wants her God. space. You don't no, send but she someone was answering, over. She was answering Barry. Man. She's answering Barry because she's friends with Barry. And Maya she, is involved with Slick Mitch. and you. What? And she answered Mitch and she said that Mitch can come over with Maya. The intent of getting them together and sending them over because she's a trusted figure that can be related is the intent to change the story. You don't inquire no, about something that's- No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Then why not just send it's Mitch not. and Barry? Send Mitch and Barry to relay it to you. I I'm confused. Why, send why do you need someone that's trusted and can relate to her story as a because, victim herself? Because we wanted to hear the story. That's just it. We wanted to hear the full-on story of what happened. You don't think that's a conflict of interest the day she wanted to post it, you sent it there, and then they posted a revised version? I, train, I did not know there was oh, a revised Yikes. version or any of that okay. shit. I sent Maya and Mitch over, and that's all we know, and that's... Now we're just doing he said, she said. I don't yeah. actually trust Adriana in a way where she wouldn't just choose clout. That's what I'm saying. Her people. choosing clout is literally doing what she did, not saying oh, a it, fucking word out of fear. 
I don't know what the fuck happened that night. That's the problem. You know what I mean? If I did, then I would obviously, bro, if, if she came to me and was like, he actually like really fucking yeah. like did something nasty, then I'm not going to defend him. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, and I wouldn't either. If, if she yeah. told, if she told but me. But the problem that, is she tiptoes over. around everything that we do because she wants to be cool with the big streamers. That's just the facts, yeah, right? The problem is when she's more. not even what? saying the truthful story, like she tiptoed around everything. That's what, that's what Mitch is saying. It's true. She did. If she came and said, <laughs> Slick did do this, it's over. It's GG. I, I, I would never even in a million years be like, are you sure? Can you change this to a, a you know an A to a B? That's, like, bro, it's your so story cool. changes so much. It's crazy. It doesn't. They, they explain how it changed, Rain. Story. Explain. You just you just agree that what Mitch said is true, right? You played it as the authority figure for it to play in your favor, correct? Yes. And now you're saying it's her fault. She tiptoes around. Every, you're literally victim blaming now. You're saying it's her fault. She tiptoes around there. She's not clear. If she would have said it's him, I would have backed down and said, it's no, like too she, bad. She, like, she what? was tiptoeing around when Mitch was calling nonstop to try to get an answer. She would not tell us the story of what happened. Yeah, can you time. But she doesn't owe you the story, Miz. She doesn't Miz, owe she it was to trying you. To just talk, we were just trying to get what happened that night. She Barry doesn't owe it to you. I, I don't think that she owes it to him. I think that it's okay for him to ask. Is it yes, but if she doesn't want to... If she, to my best yeah. friend, but it does... Oh, but dude. She, her not has answering to stop. doesn't make her less credible, Miz. Her tip to an America less credible when she's... She doesn't want to tell you you're, her be, you're his best friend. Why she didn't tell me. That's why I didn't want to go to her. I didn't want her sending Maya and everyone else there is also a fucking intrusion of her privacy. It doesn't matter if she invited you. You just called her fifty-five thousand fucking times. It's just not true. Oh my god. It's not what's not true? What? What part of that's not true? <laughs> we called her fifty-five thousand fucking times. Oh yeah, of course it's not fifty-five fucking thousand, but did you not just say you <laughs> called her forty fucking times and messed her and she didn't answer until 12? finally? No, we called her we called her, you text her the main person we were bothering, I'll be real with you, was Barry. Like, we were calling Barry a shit ton. Right. Because Barry and why not her directly? Once, and why not her directly? Because we didn't want to fucking nonstop bother the shit out of her. No, because you knew... Because she wasn't answering. She didn't want to talk. So you wanted to right, get so to her by answer, any so means possible. It, it, I understand. It's... It, she was she which she didn't answer so we called barry thing is mitch she was scared into downplaying it because she thought everybody in the state of texas was gonna hate her and her career path because yeah, she yeah. had some big streamer come and have her downplay it which i will is yeah connected to all these other big to streamers. back up barry's story i will read one of many paragraphs okay from her that she gave me permission for okay it's so disheartening, and it keeps, it keeps reminding me the reason I didn't say anything in the first place. I was forced to say something, and even when I did do what they told me to say, it wasn't enough to actually do anything. It's the fact that my career is constantly trying to be taken down because of the situation, and everyone I seem to be close with publicly is suddenly at Miss Gibbs' house the next week. It seems fishy. I want to give up, but I know I can't let them win. That's, that gives me goosebumps alone. Here's you understand? One of the that, <laughs> that makes Chills. sense. I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> What does that mean? Who, who's yeah. coming at my house? I'm, uh, who's here? And that's about it for everything in that call relating to Adriana. A lot more stuff was discussed in that call. It was over three hours long. It was still interesting to hear, but it wasn't about the topic at hand. So if you want to listen to the rest of this, I'll leave the link to Destiny's video below with the timestamp continuing on from where I left you off in this video. But now let's look at the Twitter reactions to that call. Starting with this tweet from GGC, who says, You gotta admit, it tells you a lot when over 50k people join Destiny. Destiny's YouTube stream to find out what the fuck is happening with Miskiff and in general on Twitch, lol. At the end of the day, he's still one of the most reliable streamers, even if he talked shit about your favorite streamer. Nicholas Diorio says, Twitch just had their John Swan arc. Destiny's fiance Melina shares this image with her crying and saying, I just want to go out on our dinner date, please don't cancel. And then Destiny replying, Sorry, babe. I have to leak this call I was promised I could leak. Myth reacts to the stream with this Twitter video. This, the, um... Um, who is there right now? Adriana. That is the person who tried to cancel me, so I was wondering why you guys were hanging with her, but don't bring it up with her. I don't know, I had a panic attack because it stressed me out. I Will Dominate says, There's something hilarious about the fact that there is a life-changing call being listened to about the extremely serious topic of sexual assault, and Destiny is just sitting there playing some single-player RTS game that looks like it came out in 1996 while listening to it. Frogan says, The Discord call just shows how disgusting everyone is laughing my ass off. At the end of the day, everybody involved is going to return to stream as normal, and people will forget everything that happened, and the fact that they were exposed to be garbage people laughing my ass off. Anisa 
Jamha says, Listening to five men talk about how a woman's sexual assault is a liability is so fucking icky. Whole conversation makes me sick. Deputy Aru says, Train and XQC intentionally sat on this slash weaponized an essay until it benefited them. Miskiff wanted to defend Slick no matter what. Maya went to the victim to do damage control. Mitch can't keep any of his stories straight. They are all bad. You shouldn't be picking any sides, five head. Lol says, Miskiff, the Riddler sends his regards. Showing Train in a Riddler costume. Teddy says, Miskiff crying being scared about Slick getting canceled is literally what Republicans sound like when they cry about cancel culture. Jake Lucky says, I just spent two hours listening to Trainwreck and Miskiff argue about the crazy Slick situation, and I don't think we are anywhere closer to figuring out exactly what happened, unless Maya and Adriana are involved in the discussions. Mitch also needs to stick to his story, more soon. Mitch Jones claims Miskiff sent Maya and him to downplay the sexual assault of Adriana Lee by Crazy Slick, a huge claim which needs explaining. The problem here is, is when Mitch then clarifies what Miskiff instructed them, he's not clear at all where the alleged downplaying was. Important parts from this leaked call. Barry says Maya heavily gaslit Adriana Lee that night. Mitch said Miskiff gave him and Maya a plan and direction when talking to Adriana. Mitch and Maya also say Adriana tiptoed around whether or not it was really SA at the time. I'm not saying Miskiff or Maya are innocent here. Certainly they should have handled the situation way better and could be guilty. But to not have Adriana or Maya present in the discussions meant we had to listen to Mitch and near pointless speculation on what happened that night. Speaking of Maya not being present for the discussions in the leaked call, she gets a chance to chime in when she makes a twit longer addressing what was said in that call. It's titled, My Final Statement. I would first like to respond to the recorded call from last week that was aired on stream September 22nd, 2022. I was not offered the opportunity to represent myself on that call, and thus what I said in my intentions on that day in question, July 6th, 2021, were misinterpreted. I have spoken my my truth on my stream, September 19th, 2022, but in light of false allegations brought upon me, I feel the need to speak it again. I do not want to engage in nuke wars. I do not want to play games. I will only speak to my own intentions and actions that day. I did not go to the house that day with the intention of manipulating Adriana's story. I did not cover up sexual assault. This would not be possible as even Adriana did not consider the incident to be sexual assault until this past Monday, September 19th, 2022. As she said on her stream, Adriana's feelings regarding the situation have rightfully changed since that day, and I support her. On that day, July 6, 2021, I was only able to operate off of the information that was given to me by Adriana and the eyewitnesses at the time. That information was that there was no rape or sexual assault, but that Crazy Slick made Adriana uncomfortable. I supported Adriana in sharing this. I did ask about her experience, and I did go there with the intention of understanding the truth of the incident that occurred at the party in January of 2020. At the time, I thought this was the right thing to do. I fully understand that it was wrong to insert myself into that situation. I apologize for the power dynamic and the harm it might have caused. It was irresponsible for me to not remove myself from the situation, and I take full accountability for making this mistake. I am deeply disappointed in my judgment and choices, and I am deeply sorry to Adriana for my involvement. I never intended for my status to influence Adriana. I would never knowingly protect a predator, and I would never threaten or discourage a victim from speaking out about their experiences. I absolutely condemn the actions of Crazy Slick. I have privately apologized to Adriana and will publicly apologize again. I am truly sorry for Adriana's experience with Crazy Slick and for the experiences of the other women who have shared their stories. I am sorry and I feel horrible for being part of the reason that Adriana has experienced everything she has in the past year. I am sorry that this has become a nauseating he said she said battle. I have remained in this industry because I have always seen streaming as a means to an end. The end being a powerful platform for conversation education. For those who are still willing to support my platform, thank you. For those of you unwilling, I understand. I am stepping away from my online platforms indefinitely. I'm sorry. Thank you all for reading. So that's what Miss Kiff's ex-girlfriend Maya had to say about all of this. Now speaking of Maya being Miss Kiff's ex-girlfriend, we actually got some leaked information tweeted out by the YouTube streamer Ice Poseidon where he shows Barry talking about why they are no longer together. Here is that clip. Okay, so him and Maya's real breakup reason was, uh, while he was with her, he didn't love her or anything. He was just keeping around for content. And every girl he flew into that house, he was just fucking them while he was still with Maya. Every single, like, OF girl or whatever is on the stream, he was just having sex with them. Well, he was dating her for a while. It was just at the end, he started just every girl he would have over, he would just fuck when their relationship was going bad, when she was still living there. And then when we were in that call, the whole time he was just begging him to delete the tweet because uh it was bad for his org 
and he really wanted to keep crazy slick around. He couldn't lose his best friend. I said he sexually assaulted the girl. Because I was there, dude, when um I brought Mitch and Maya over. And I was there when Maya, like, was trying to get her to downplay the story. And because of Miskiff, this dude was able to just be a creep to even more girls. Amaranth responds to this with three question marks, to which Sup responds, yeah, I 100% don't believe this. West says, Ice Poseidon adding on to the Twitch drama, showing Walter White meticulously crafting his meth recipe. Keemstar quote tweets Ice and says, Miskiff now got exposed for cheating on his girlfriend Maya, hashtag drama alert. Keemstar also shares a tweet longer from Noah Hugbox and says, Call Me Carson victim wasn't a two year age gap? Miskiff and Maya exposed again, hashtag drama alert. So for those of you who who don't know, Noah Hugbox is the former friend of Call Me Carson who came onto Drama Alert to share what Call Me Carson told him and a bunch of other people about engaging sexually with minors. If you want to learn more about that, I have a video about it, but the reason why this is relevant for this video is that he comments a bit about that situation in this tweet longer, alongside exposing Maya and Miskiff, as well as the entire industry, for knowing that Slick sexually harassed women but protected him anyways. His tweet longer is titled, Game Over, This Will Be My Last Post. I'm going to try to explain the relevant events of the last couple years, in the most concise way possible. This was always written off as drama when I tried to talk about it, but I only spoke of it because it really bothered me, and I cared. It is not easy to be threatened with legal action when you are just trying to tell people what's going down. That's why my tweets were always so cryptic. I am not a clout chaser. I haven't even made any money over the last several years, only alienated my audience since I started talking about this stuff, and at this point want absolutely nothing to do with the internet. I promise this context ties in to what's going on right now. We'll start with the Carson thing. I found out about what he did in March of 2020, and for a moment considered tweeting it right then and there. Unfortunately, I did not have any concrete details initially. In fact, the few details I had were lies. The group had a meeting later that day with our manager, Ryan, told us that he had dealt with this several times before, and we can make this go away. And some members of the group insisted that we needed to stick by Carson. At this point, I was checked out completely, but naively was shocked that so many people seemed to value their careers over doing the right thing thing. Over the next several months, I started asking around as to what others had been told, and found out that every single person was told an entirely different story, as to how many girls he was contacting and what their ages were. This pushed me to do something, and I had actually gotten the entire group to agree to recording a video of each of us simply saying what we were told, and uploading it directly to the Lunch Club channel. No baseless accusations, no clout chasing, just the truth. At the last moment, many of us pulled out of the video because, in Schlatt's words, he had too much to lose. Deja vu. It was never supposed to go through Keemstar. People who knew this had to be the case because they were there then took to Twitter to flame me for it going to Keemstar, when it was actually Keem who messaged me first after somebody tipped him off. I wasn't about to back down because so many people were being selfish cowards, and thankfully a close friend had my back and came with me. Drama alert was the absolute last resort, because again, this stuff is not drama to me. Carson had a whole discord of content creators that aided him in strategizing damage control in the lead up to the drama alert, because naturally Ryan had gone behind my back, warned him and tried to prep him. I know this because not all of them suck, and they told me what was up. Then the creators in that discord fled like rats from a sinking ship when it was clear the situation was not salvageable. I called Carson several times in the days leading up to the drama alert because I did not want the venue to discredit the story, and I wanted him to take responsibility for his actions like a fucking adult. To this day he hasn't even admitted to what he did, and everyone still thinks it was a two year age gap. That is not true. I was told that in private Ryan had said, and I know this is going to sound like a joke. Noah is like the Joker. He wants to see my whole operation burn. I didn't see how exposing a weirdo would bring down his whole operation, but that started to make sense later. Ryan pushed me to make a commentary style expose video on Carson, for which I had no interest because I did not believe in profiting off of something like this. Then, in March of last year, he called me and said to me, verbatim, you can never tell anyone about this. The problem for you has always been money. How much do you need to stop talking about this? That made me sick to my stomach. Seeing as how I just knowingly lit any potential for an online career on fire because, to me, not being party to bullshit like that is worth a hell of a lot more than being a fucking e-celeb. The very idea I'd take an actual real-life bribe to stay quiet about everything made me wonder how common that is in this industry. If this was presented to me, a bystander, then I can't even imagine what actual victims are told. He also brought up to me that when I first met him, I told him how the whole reason I even participated in the lunch club stuff was because my dad had cancer and I wanted to help him retire. I owe almost everything
everything that made me the person I am today to my father. Hell, my game reviews were based on the conversations he and I had, and I figured it was the least I could do if he was going to kick the bucket. I'm not trying to seem like Mr. Good Guy here, but that's the genuine reason why I put up with that shit for so long. Fortunately, my dad is fine now. He was fine by the time Ryan said this to me. The fact that he tried to leverage my father's brain tumor genuinely made me laugh, but not because it was funny. I told him to shove it, and then later brought up how disturbing all of that was. All he had to say is that he switched up his meds, Sure, buddy. The mental health shield is used by these people a lot. It probably came out of left field for a lot of people when I started going over the whole dream stand thing. But I did that because I know that whole crew got picked up by the very same management, the management that expressed repeatedly that they had made this go away multiple times before. The whole crew, the management, really freaked me the fuck out, especially when a young audience is involved. It didn't feel right to let a bunch of impressionable kids get pie pipered again. Anyhow, this brings me to Miskiff. In July of last year, Connor Eats Pants and I ended up having a conversation, wherein he told me that I needed to stop talking about the Carson slash Ryan thing, or it would end poorly for me. I took this as a threat, because why else would someone say that? Also, this wasn't the first time I had been spoken to like that. I hazarded an educated guess that OTK was probably going to be involved with Carson somehow in the near future. And lo and behold, a month or so later, Carson made his return to Twitch on Miskiff's stream. Interesting detail here. Shortly after this, Carson, in an effort to redeem himself without taking any responsibility for what he did, announced he was going to do a year of charity. And who was the first recipient of this charity? Alvius, a charity that belonged to Miskiff's girlfriend Maya. And it's not like she's giving money to people in need. She's playing with fucking birds. A bit of a conflict of interest to me. I talked about that in an interview with another streamer, on a stream with about 90 viewers. Later that evening, Miskiff reacted to me describing this bizarre series of coincidences in front of about 30k viewers, by saying, this guy's a nobody, he doesn't know what he's talking about, etc. without refuting a single thing I said. Liar. You cannot convince me that him bringing Carson on, despite knowing what he did, normalizing his comeback, and then indirectly taking a monetary kickback from him, is in any way legitimate or just a coincidence. It would have been very easy, hell, it would have made much more sense to not have him on. Funnily enough, Miskiff deleted the video of him and Carson right after gaslighting the fuck out of me about it. I was aware of some of the slick stuff months and months ago, the harassment not the actual assault, and none of it surprised me. I didn't know how it was possible that I knew while living halfway across the country and having never fucked met these people, and yet people living in that very house claim they didn't know. Now that everyone's finally talking about it, and for a moment I probably seem a lot less nuts to people who weren't in the know, figured now's a good time as any to get this all off my chest. I've been carrying the weight of this information for a couple years now, and it made me into a really unhappy person for a while. Again, I doubt I'm anywhere close to having gotten the worst of it. This shit has to change. I cite so many personal antidotes here, because they illustrate how common covering for people like this is. I want to make something clear. When these streamers act like these accusations come completely out of left field, a lot of them are lying. You can now see they hold on to the stuff as blackmail, not out of care for the victims. They've been harping on this for like a year now. Everybody talks and almost everybody knows, well in advance. They always feign ignorance, and they dogpile on you in an instant if you go against the narrative that makes things easy for them. Don't ever trust an e-celeb. Hell, that applies to me too. Don't expect me to comment on any of this after this post. I'm not here to argue. I want nothing to do with any of these people ever again. I don't mean for this to come off as a narcissistic act to take people down, or elevate myself over others either. I want people to understand how duplicitous and cutthroat these people are. I want people to get a clearer picture of what they are getting into if you pursue this sort of thing. I haven't signed any NDAs, so hopefully nobody decides to sue me over this. Hell, the only contract I've signed this entire time was to get a figurine made of me climbing out of a jar of semen. I hope you can see the symbolicism in that. If you are going to do this stuff, don't ever put yourself in the position of relying on anybody but yourself. That's harder to do than you think. What I've described is, I'm sure, trivial in comparison to what happens to the real victims of this shit. Unless the culture changes, rats like these fuckers are going to just keep getting away with it. That's all I have to say. So based on that statement from Noah Hugbox, being someone deeply involved in this Twitch culture, previously being part of another streamer group Lunch Club, in combination with the three hour long call that was leaked by Destiny, as well as my own experience with behind the scenes creator culture, I pretty much agree with Noah Hugbox sentiment. I know because of the Call Me Carson thing, he's not the most reliable narrator, but based on what I know and have seen, I pretty much agree with his overall sentiment in that twit longer. But if you disagree with me, you can feel free to by leaving a comment in the comment section below. So at this point after all of this, you would think that Miskiff would be a little bit more sympathetic and less selfish, but we quickly found out that he's not exactly the most sympathetic to the situation. Considering he started talking to his chat about how many viewers he would get on his return stream, he says, I think after everything, everything is fine. I'll probably come back bigger to be honest 
Blast. Tons of hate watchers. Just gonna run ads. I don't know who's my friend anymore, lol. My best friend went and was a fucking creep. I have friends, I'll be fine. The only reason why I'm not streaming is because, honestly, just haven't processed everything. I'll do a 24 hour when I come back. 24 hour comeback stream. Deal? Chat, how many viewers do you think I'll have? What's all your opinions on this whole thing? Why are you guys saying sad? In case you're wondering, I'll probably be back mid-October. And last night he actually did come back on October 10th in a stream that is now deleted because in it all he did was play victim and it looked very, very bad. Luckily I have the stream downloaded so I can show you guys what he said. Bro, this is so hard. Dream, I get you now, man. I, I get it. Like, this shit's tough. I've been going through hell. Hell. Absolute hell. I think it's pretty obvious I've been going through absolute fucking hell. Ugh. God, I'm ugly. Wait, do I have more viewers than everyone else on Twitch? Wait, I fucking do! Should I just go offline? <laughs> Should I just go offline? Look, I know how Twitch chat is. I know how you sick, disgusting fucks are. My life got ruined, all right? My, my life got absolutely fucking ruined. And I know damn well, so many of you guys were just sitting there eating popcorn while it was happening. You guys are sick fucks. You're disgusting. You disgust me. You would do it too? If I was a Twitch viewer during that week of a hurricane of fucking shit, I would have not left my seat. I, you are 100%. I would have not left my fucking seat. That was the most wild week of just... It's like everything came out in one week of just everything. It was the most ridiculous, insane week I've ever seen on Twitch, period. Period. That was just wild. Jake Paul was right, you know? Any publicity is good publicity. This is so hard to go live, man. It's so hard. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh. He needs to go to Turkey ASAP, okay? He needs to fly out to Istanbul. Bro, sorry, you get your own fucking content for the love of God. He needs to he needs to I'm fly not, out. I'm not gonna talk until Hassan stops watching me. <laughs> I'm not I'm okay. Well. I'm I'm not gonna do it. I'm, until Hassan stops watching me, I am not going I'm to I'm not do stopping. It. I will not talk. He will sit here. I will sit here till the top of the hour. I am not moving until he stops watching. I'm watching his stream. He went up <laughs> 20,000 viewers doing this. I know him. <laughs> nope. And he's waiting to the tie smirking. No. Nope. Waiting to the top of the hour. And he knows damn well. All right, Hassan, I'll start talking at 3 o'clock exactly, all right? At the top of the hour, I'm, you're going to run your ad and, that you have to run, and I'm going to start talking. Good. I, I'll, I'll do it. I'll wait. All that stuff happening, chat, I just had to walk away. I, I, I had to. You couldn't, I could not sit there and, and react to it or see it or look at it. It was just so much, I had to walk away. I think the smartest thing I did in this whole situation is I walked away. Because I think that that helped me a lot is by just not talking. And, I, and that, that honestly is the lesson I learned is just shut the fuck up. Like you, got, you just got to shut up. It was been the shittiest three weeks of my life easily. Easily the shittiest three weeks of my life. I have, I, I barely sleep. I, I, I'm letting you know, I don't sleep. I, I'm on three hours of sleep, maybe. I have night terrors all night. That's all I have. I have night terrors. It's it's literally me at night sleeping, and I'm just like, I I, I can't sleep. I'm just sitting there with night terrors. Is Hassan still watching me? I'm, I'm literally just waiting for Hassan to stop watching me. I'm going to keep watching. Is he still? He's still... Bro, you went up 40,000 viewers, Hassan. I'm not... I'm still watching. Get to the fucking point. I'm not doing this. Stop stalling. XTC's watching too. I'm not stopping until they stop watching. <laughs> they're so annoying. It's like there's little remains left and they're eating. It, this is disgusting. There's literally I, I'm like on the ground dying and they're eating. Like what? This is this is terrible. Can you guys okay. fuck off and play a if game once, that please, he and just leave me alone? Watching the shit out of this. I don't know what I. What, 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 what is he? What's he on? Can we just move on with our lives, please? I would do the exact same thing. Of course I would. I I'm just pissed that they're doing it. Don't you understand? Of course I would do the same fucking thing. I should just go offline. Should we just play Mario until they stop watching? <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. In both chats today, we're gonna play Mario 64. I feel like a dead carcass on the side of the road, and these vultures are eating. Like that's how I I, I legit feel like a dead carcass. I'm barely alive, and they're- they're scavenging and eating.
they are still just watching me. Like, they're still... Should I just pull up porn at this point? As an employee, what do you need to know about it? First, sexual harassment is against the law. And it's against your company's policy. Sorry. You looked really tense. No, I really don't like it when you do that. Can you please stop? What is he doing? Is he watching a sexual harassment is illegal video? Oh, come on, dude. Wait, where's the gotchi version? Word around the offices, you've got a fat cock. <laughs> yes, I do. I've got a fat cock too. Maybe we should rub our fat cocks together sometime. Maybe a little oil? Two fat cocks? Together? Oil? No, they're still watching. What do we do? I don't want this. This is literally why I didn't want to go live. I wanted to go live when they were streaming to not have this. But this backfired hard. You make it look worse by making a joke out of it? How am I making it a joke? You think it's a joke? Me playing Mario and not wanting people to, to listen to this is not a joke. No, listen, the reason why I don't want people to watch this is because I, unlike some streamers who believe I want to watch this, I, or I want to talk about this, it's the last thing I want to talk about, man. Like, I, I know some streamers are like, oh, he's excited to come back and keep this drama up. It, dude, this is not, this is not Twitch drama. Let, let me just start with, this is not fucking Twitch drama. I'll basically say what I'm going to say about this because it's, it's, it's hard. I know a lot of you guys are here for drama and you want me to say something and start this massive wave of round two, right? I'm sure a lot of you guys are holding your popcorn and pause champing, super excited that I'm going to say something and this is going to be round two of the drama storm. I'm just going to say this and it's the truth. I would absolutely love to talk about this stuff. I really would. But as I said, this isn't Twitch drama. This isn't a, this isn't something that is a, something that should be online. This is more serious. And there is a law firm that is investigating the situation. And I really can't talk about it because I'm extremely advised not to talk about it. And as you guys can probably assume, based on the fact that you don't see it, it's pretty evident that I am off OTK as of right now until the investigation is over. I am glad that OTK is taking this shit very seriously. But yes, this is a very serious investigation and this is very serious and it's a legal matter. I removed everything from OTK. I am currently on leave of OTK, which means Erob's chat will actually like me for once. So so we really just are kind of waiting, chat. There's not much I could really say. And I think if you guys have learned anything these past few weeks, it's shut up. You know what I mean? Don't talk about shit. Don't deal with stuff. It, it, I... It's the right thing to do. And I shouldn't talk. I know a lot of you guys are like, Miz, start talking. Haven't you realized now that when everyone else talks and when people talk, it, 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 it gets worse. This is a legal matter. This is not some Twitch drama. This is not some like, hey, fuck you, man. And then he says it, fuck back. This is not that. This is way more serious than that. Does that make sense? I, I love it when everyone, all the other streamers opened up my chat. My chat was nothing but love and support. And then now everyone else <laughs> opened up my chat. And the chats just went to dog shit. It was perfectly fine when no one was here and it was just love and support with the fucking hell. They're like coming in, saying shit, and then going back to their other chats and being like, I fucking did it. I told Miz to go fuck himself. Has OTK been supporting you? Great question. Yes and no. I'm off OTK. Like when I said I'm off OTK, chat, I haven't been in meetings. I haven't talked to them. The only people I could talk to are non-org owners. I I'm still, I'm waiting for G2 to hit me up. I really am. Or FaZe Clan. They don't give a shit. They have good parties. I could start a new org. I could. But I am very confident in the investigation, chat. I am very, very confident. So that's really it. Uh, in this whole thing, someone said a lot of people shit on you. Yeah, I lost a lot of friends. It sucks. I I, I have lost a lot of fucking friends. You know what I, and I, I come to realize is I don't have any. <laughs> come to realize that pretty quickly. Other than that, I don't want to talk about this. Like I said, this isn't Twitch drama. This is serious allegations, and I can't talk about it. There's 200,000 people watching you right now. My God, dude. Can I just move on? Can they just stop reacting to me so I can run an ad? Like, dude, they're just fucking watching me for... I'm not even talking about it anymore. I don't know what to do. What do you even do when this happened? The video you watched? Oh, the sexual harassment thing? I I was trying to pull up the video of word on the office that you have a fat cock. I, I pulled up the wrong video, and I'm sorry about that. Is Miskiff actually fucking stupid? 
Dude, I pulled up the wrong video. I meant to just do word on the... I even typed it in. You could see I did it. Like, I don't get it. <laughs> I, I literally just... I tried typing in word on the office. You found out... I, I pull up the wrong video. I, I I don't know what to do. What a piece of garbage. I'm actually just like how socially inept he is to think that it's a remotely funny pull up. I didn't mean to do it. Like, I, like should I be Ludwig to start typing? I did. I meant to pull up word on the office. You have a fat cock as a fucking meme. I pulled up the wrong video. This is garbage. And this is the problem. Is then this shit gets around. Misgift shows what sexual rights. They're trying to make me look terrible. This is the issue. Like, fuck this. It's- it's terrible. I'm so- I am very sorry I pulled up that video. I- I told you, this is not a joke. There's a reason why I didn't go live for three fucking weeks, chat. This is not a joke. This is a very serious a allegations and all that stuff. It, I'm taking it extremely seriously. That's why I haven't even talked about it. That's why I haven't gone live, so I haven't done anything. I haven't talked about it. I'm sorry that I did that. It was not meant to be like that. But then people clip this, and then just make it absolutely fucking terrible. And that's the problem. I disabled clips. I literally did not want to anyone to talk or deal with this. I just- I want to disable clips. And now everyone is just- It's- it's ridiculous. <laughs> Dude, chat, you gotta read these. If there's an investigator that shows that he's innocent, why would he apologize- Apology shows guilt. Bro, I can't stand this. It was an accident. I don't know what else to say. It's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous, chat. Why is that allowed to be up there? You know what I mean? Like, it was an absolute accident. I typed in gotchi. Why don't we throw that on the top of LSF? You know what I mean? It- You say, no LSF chat. That's how things get spread. Is that the problem? That. Like, I did it by accident. You saw what happened, but now they're just going to sling that to the world, and that's the issue. And you say, stop looking at LSF. Chat, that is the fucking problem in itself. Is that stuff like that is- I didn't mean to do it. It was clearly an obviously- I- I'm, I fucked up. I was typing in gotchi hyper. I was trying to find them in a fucking- you know what I mean? It, it, I- I fucked up. I clicked the wrong thing. But they make it into such- like such a dramatic thing. Like, I did that on purpose. It was making a joke. It's- it's terrible. It's actually fucking terrible. This whole thread is garbage. And these people are garbage. And you say, don't worry about it, but chat, this is why we're in this, like, you understand that this is the pro- it's a huge problem. Like, this is actually a fucking issue. This shit fucks everything. But it's just, everyone's just shitting on me, and then what happens is, and then other people see that, and then they go on it, and then it just spreads. You can't win. And I turned off clips for a reason. I was nervous as shit to go live. Of course I was- I was terrified. But then everyone started watching it, I was, I was- I was scared, I clicked the wrong fucking video, it's all I did. Seeing that shit, where it's like, completely skewed to Miz doing- you know, it's- it's wrong. It's- it's actually just fucking wrong. So later in the stream, Miskiff brings on a tattoo artist to give him a Pepe tattoo, and during their conversation, the tattoo artist says that he's good at covering up bad tattoos. And this is how Miskiff responds. No matter what, dude, I, one of my things is... I am a master at cover-ups and reconstruction. Me too, for four years. <laughs> Excuse me? There, I, I, I think this will not look good like this. Like, let's Man, yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. So with that clip and the whole stream in general, I am just furious. I'm not gonna lie. That had to be one of the most tone-deaf, worst responses to a serious situation regarding sexual assault that I have ever seen in my life. Him making jokes about having to step away from OTK, saying that he could get picked up by FaZe Clan, they don't give a fuck, and have killer parties. I don't know if he was implying anything there, but the sexual assault against Adriana literally happened at a content creator party. And then playing Mario 64 in that gotchi video, when he's intending to address the serious stuff, is just only to end up addressing views and people reacting to him more than the actual situation that took place place, not even mentioning Adriana Lee's name once, and him saying that the smartest thing to do was to be quiet and continue to shut up? That's literally how you got into this problem in the first place. You tried to shut everybody up in regards to talking about the sexual assault. That's literally why this happened. And your takeaway from all of this is to cover up and shut up more? I understand because of the legal proceedings he can't say that much, but he could have at least expressed some sympathy for Adriana instead of just 
talking about himself the whole time? Like, he doesn't fuck up the investigation to express sympathy and remorse for what your friend Slick did to Adriana. What he said in his prepared statement and this stream is just a complete contrast in priorities, to the point where even the next day, he brags about how many views he got on the last stream. 800,000 people have gone through my stream yesterday. 800,000 or something like that. 700,000, something like that, went through my stream yesterday and at least clicked on it, right? It was the most I ever had in my entire life. But you know what's interesting is we banned in total 500 people. So, like, if you take that the moon and you take the sun, you take that number, is it really that much? Kind of no, right? Am I crazy to think that? It's not terrible. Check, you guys are looking at the positives, right? <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to be, you know, dead. Should I hide this? Do I have to hide OTK? Listening to all of this is just so disheartening, disgusting. His priorities in terms of what he cares about in this situation are just so screwed up and it's so transparent and I just actually can't stand to listen to it. Editing down this stream was painful, but I did do it for you guys because I want Miskiff to be held accountable and I hate to see all of this be swept under the rug just for him to continue a successful Twitch career. So yesterday I show you Miskiff's awful deleted return stream, which after I uploaded upload the video he made public again, and then since then he has made private again. This has happened upwards to three times so far, and every time it's up, people keep giving me comments like, it's not deleted, why are you lying? But right now, it is currently deleted. Look at the screenshot, it's supposed to be between these two VODs. Maybe he'll make it public again, but I can't keep updating the title, so let's just say it's deleted. Regardless, he never fully removed it, as there is an edited version of the stream on his channel, but in it, literally all of the bad parts of the stream were cut out, such as him feeling sorry for himself, talking about how he's getting night terror, him making jokes about the situation, and that whole thing with him bringing up the sexual assault prevention video while trying to address something that involved sexual assault. That in combination with him disabling ads on the video, despite making over $10,000 in subscriptions and donations during the live stream that was clipped for that video, to me, it just seems like he's making himself look better than he actually is, which is not a surprise considering he said he was the master of cover-ups. I am a master at cover-ups and reconstruction. Me too, for four years. <laughs> Excuse me? Speaking of that clip, ViewCow tweeted it out with the caption, There's no way Miskiff came back just to make jokes like these. This faux quote tweets him and says, The fact that Emeru made a big scene on how men don't really care about women being assaulted, yet she's sitting there while Miskiff makes these jokes? Like, be for real. Keemstar reacts to this by saying, How is he making jokes about covering up SA? I actually hate Miskiff. There is no empathy for the victim. Keem also says, Personal opinion. Miskiff and Maya should never be forgiven for what they did. The whole OTK should be shut down. Caro says, The way Miskiff conducted himself today on his stream in the light of his allegations is so disheartening and honestly makes me so angry as a woman and assault survivor. His behavior should not be allowed on Twitch, and I'm saying this as someone who has watched Miz for years. Sad. Nicholas Diorio says, Miskiff is such a slimy, pathetic loser. Slime Machine says, When Miskiff brings Crazy Slick on stream to double dip on the comeback numbers, showing Ernie introducing Bert to the stream. Casey Tron says, Miskiff going live and trying to laugh off the SA situation is gross. This is why I feel so strongly about building a safe space for women. Our trauma is a joke to them. The slime ball gonna delete his VODs and everything too once he sees the community wasn't laughing along. He gonna play the I didn't know any better card for the fourth billionth time. Enough already. Liv says, as predicted, Miskiff will get his platform back with zero repercussions. Vinix says, I used to think Minecraft stands were terrible, and then I saw Miskiff stands. Daddy says, Miskiff saying he's happy his chat isn't mad like his mods aren't banning everyone that's mad or upset right now. Draco says, Miskiff crying like he on a YouTube apology video, showing a screenshot of Miskiff very sad under a children's towel. Destiny Out of Context posts this clip with the caption, Miskiff has returned to Twitch today. Crayfish says, Look at Miskiff Lawyer. Nah, he going to jail. Showing a picture of Call Me Carson. Tiana says, Miskiff is a literal fucking child. Silent Enigma says, Bro, what is Miskiff doing? Showing Miskiff casually drinking his drink while playing the sexual harassment workplace prevention video. Mono quote tweets this and says, I've always had gripes with Miskiff over the people he's housed and platformed, but this takes the cake. You cannot come back to Twitch crying about how you were unable to sleep for weeks, then make a mockery of the crimes you were guilty of covering up. Brian also shows this same screenshot and says, Nah, look at my client Miskiff dog. We ain't making it. Pooper Doodle quote tweets 
retweets an old tweet of hers from when this situation broke out that says, as usual, history repeats itself and the sexual assault and harassment will be swept under the rug. Now the victims will have to watch as everything becomes about the org and watch Miskiff go live, as I watched SCO, and thousands of people showing their sympathy to him. Her new tweet quoting this says, I called it. Miskiff called me a couple weeks ago to apologize for joking about my rape. He seemed sorry at the time. He was worried I had proof of him joking, but seeing him joke about sexual harassment on his stream today? Come on, dude. I thought you were sorry. I'm so disappointed. Thought he was better than this, and I feel stupid for believing in him. To those of you telling me I'm lying and burning bridges? Like, shut the fuck up. Unlike Miz, I don't care about my views, and everyone knew at the time there was a police investigation. Casey Tron responds to her by saying, Women, stop making jokes of sexual harassment. Miz kids, she's looking for clout. No. Women are just tired of being harassed and then it being laughed off. Dev says, Miskiff acting way too jokey for hiding a sexual assault and letting the perpetrator stay in your house knowing what he did. AD30 says, I love how Miskiff never acknowledged Adriana's pain and trauma she went through and instead makes it about himself. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. I just shut up. And Dorigami says, Everyone today watching Miskiff. A fucking clown. Chat, do you see it? Right, chat, look at it. It's right there. Guys, are you... A fucking clown! It's right there! Holy shit! That's crap! I've never seen a big clown like this before! That's the whole circus! Right there, look at it! Rar Sassy says, So I heard Miskiff is happy his chat isn't mad at him. Bro, your mods are banning people left and right. Most likely at your order. You keep people from talking about it. You are literally covering up the cover-up of sexual assault allegations, bro. You can't fail harder. CAJ says, Miskiff is a fucking demon. How the fuck can you laugh while talking about covering up sexual harassment, you freak? XO Ariel says, Miskiff was right when he said streamers are shitty people. Ollie says, Miskiff throwing a temper tantrum on stream because Hassan and XQC were reacting to him, even though his entire brand is leeching off of streamers and inserting himself into drama? Stimmy Hendrick responds by saying, Miskiff fans on their way to defend him even when he is clearly in the wrong. Showing a picture of Moist Critical sitting on a cock scooter, Holly also tweets out this clip of Disguised Toast and says, Toast even talked about Miskiff using Valkyrie's breakdown for views. He'd farm this to death if it wasn't him. Yes. I, I mean, that's true, but... I mean, it's true. If this was happening to someone else, I think he would have done a 24-hour stream covering everything. That's why I personally don't feel... much cov like talking about it on stream. Because I know if the shoe was on the other foot... He would farm this. He would have farmed this for hours, he, like he farmed Ray's thing. I remember. I remember when Ray was having her breakdown about reflect, and he was loving farming that kind of content, and witnessing Ray have a breakdown on her stream, and trying to like get involved and say oh Ray here you should probably like stop and people saying oh great job Miss Kiff it's like motherfucker this was the guy farming the content so no I don't feel bad talking about it it's just to me it's just business but I mean Ray as I always say Ray just kind of believes in the intention of people so, but as a bystander and as Ray's friend, I didn't like how that whole thing played out. And I didn't like how people were portrayed in that situation. But of course, I can't say shit because at the end of the day, I'm just a bystander. New year, new me. A time where people wipe their plate clean of all the bad stuff that happened to them in 2022 and look forward to the future. Unfortunately for OTK though, what they have to wipe off their plate is the founder of their organization intentionally minimizing and covering up their best friend's sexual assault. If you don't know about the Miskiff Crazy Slick cover-up situation, I have multiple videos covering it in depth, and I implore you to click the cards up above to get caught up on all of this. But for those of you who are in the loop, you'll know that OTK made a statement last September stating that Miskiff is temporarily stepping down as a member of the organization while they conduct a third-party legal investigation into the allegations that he covered up sexual assault. And yesterday, right on New Year's Eve, OTK finally gave us an update on this three-month-plus-long legal investigation into Miskiff. In the tweet they say, 
On September 20th, OTK began the process of contracting a third-party law firm to investigate the conduct and allegations made against one of our founding members, Miskiff. We proceeded to retain Jackson Walker LLP, one of the largest and most experienced neutral investigation firms in our state. The scope of the investigation was to determine whether or not Miskiff attempted to cover up or minimize sexual assault allegedly committed by one of his former roommates. Jackson Walker was granted free reign to gather all relevant facts, interview witnesses, and advise OTK as to whether evidence supported the allegations. Miskiff was placed on unpaid leave for the duration of the investigation. According to Jackson Walker's investigation, Investigations Council did not find direct evidence that Miskiff attempted to minimize or cover up sexual assault as alleged. Nevertheless, OTK believes that Miskiff has shown a callous disregard towards the severity of sexual misconduct and racial prejudice in our space. His statements regarding these matters on his comeback stream on October 11th demonstrated a lack of empathy and ignorance towards the seriousness of the situation and the impact that his conduct has on our community. Due to his actions, the OTK Board of Directors has suspended Miskiff from his board duties effective immediately, and he will be placed on monitored probation until he demonstrates to the board that he is capable of upholding our organization's values. His status as an OTK member has otherwise been reinstated. OTK stands firmly against sexual harassment, assault, and bigotry of all forms, and is committed to upholding its core values of equality, respect, and inclusivity. We appreciate the support of our community throughout this process, and will continue working tirelessly to ensure sure our organization is one you can be proud of. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I am far from proud of OTK after this statement, and I have a lot of issues with what they said. So the worst part of this statement, in my opinion, is the sentence, Investigations Council did not find direct evidence that Miskiff attempted to minimize or cover up sexual assault as alleged, acting as if this allegation came up with no proof to back it up. When Adriana first talked about this in depth on her stream, she showed a clip of Miskiff very directly and deliberately minimizing Crazy Slick's actions towards Adriana Lee. I told him, I'm like, look, you didn't rape anybody, you know? It's one thing, I, I feel like, I mean, like, he didn't do anything. He didn't. And like, people make it seem like he did. When people like, think of it, they think that he stuck his fucking dick inside her without her consent. And I'm like, that's what people perceive it as. People probably don't even know the situation. I don't think there's a single person that we used to hang out with that doesn't hang out with Slick anymore because of what happened. I actually think there's literally none. Because the reality is, worst comes to worst of it, it's fucking like sexual harassment, right? I mean like, who get, like, no one, it, it, of what you can deem of it, it's sexual harassment, whatever. At a low scale, it's not really a big deal. I don't think people really gave a shit and really cared. So after watching that clip, it's pretty obvious why a lot of people were alleging that Miskiff was minimizing sexual assault. This is why the story got big. This is why people got so mad. It wasn't just Adriana Lee saying, fuck Miskiff and everybody believing her and automatically shitting on Miskiff with no proof. This is the clip that got people angry. And to say that is not direct evidence of minimizing sexual assault would actually probably be right legally. I'm no law expert, but it could be argued that Miskiff didn't know the extent of what Crazy Slick did to Adriana when he made those statements, which makes him legally exempt from minimizing the situation because there is no direct evidence that he knew the full extent of the situation when he made those comments. And I don't think the law firm Jackson Walker LLC would allow OTK to post a statement like that if it wasn't legally sound. But the thing is, people aren't mad at Miskiff because he broke the law. We're mad at him because he's a piece of shit who continued to protect his best friend, who he knew did some sort of awful thing, in addition to blacklisting and cutting off off Adriana Lee from social gatherings just because she was the victim of Slick's misconduct. Everybody knew Miskiff was guilty of being a piece of shit before this legal investigation was ever launched. The only reason OTK launched a legal investigation was to protect their ass from getting sued, as well as giving the audience a flimsy excuse to keep Miskiff in the organization. And people may say, Oh, but Jackson Walker LLP is one of the most experienced neutral investigative firms in Texas. With a reputation like that, how do you have 
have the balls to doubt their judgment on this. Well, I actually don't doubt their legal judgment, as after this investigation, I am confident that Miskiff cannot be prosecuted for this, but just because they did a good job for doing what they were paid to do doesn't make them neutral. They were literally paid by OTK, an organization founded by Miskiff, in order to prove that Miskiff is legally innocent. A member of OTK that everybody in the organization has every reason to want to keep on, as he created the brand, and the brand financially profits from the large audience he pulls to them. I mean, even at the end of the statement, despite acknowledging that Miskiff is a piece of shit and is not taking this shit seriously, still leaves open the possibility for him to get back onto the board of directors if he demonstrates he is capable of upholding the organization's values. Guarantee within less than a year, Miskiff is going to be in the exact same position in OTK as he was prior to these allegations coming out. The goal of all of this is to minimize damages and save Miskiff and the organization's reputation, not to give a neutral and fair verdict on this entire situation as a whole. I mean, Jackson Walker LLP is a law firm. Their job is to prove their client as innocent as possible within the confines of the law. Everything on their webpage about investigations says their goal is to get outstanding results for their client. And as said by OTK themselves in their statement, they are the ones who contacted Jackson Walker for this investigation, making OTK their client. So their goal is to make them look as innocent as possible within the confines of the law. And they can talk about putting Miskiff on probation all they want, but let's be real, Miskiff Miskiff is OTK. To the point where when Miskiff blocked me on Twitter for a tweet I made, he also had the OTK account block me shortly after. Meaning currently at this point in time, he is involved with and responsible for the organization enough to have control of their main social medias. I mean, Young Jeff could have been frantically blocking everybody who responded to the OTK statement alongside Miskiff on New Year's Eve night, but I'm pretty sure he was doing what everybody else was doing and drinking White Claws with the homies on New Year's. By the way, Jeff, you seem like a cool guy. I I have nothing against you, and I'm kind of sorry you had to be put through this mess, as I'm sure you're doing a good job. But all that is just to say that there is no way that the intention of this investigation was to give a neutral verdict on the situation as a whole, but rather to prove Miss Kiff legally innocent of malicious intentions that cannot be 100% proven, and to help give OTK and Miss Kiff headlines like this in order to trick their viewers into thinking everything's okay. Look guys, he's proven not guilty! Miss Kiff is awesome again, yeah! Pog, 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 pog! Guys, just because it can't legally be proven doesn't mean that it didn't happen. You saw the clips, you saw the footage. Miskiff was clearly minimizing Crazy Slick's sexual assault on Adriana, and while in a court of law, he probably could argue that he didn't know the extent of it until after he minimized it, which would make him not legally liable. Let's be real, Crazy Slick was his self-proclaimed best friend, and in the Discord call, he was way more concerned with losing Crazy Slick as a best friend rather than the well-being of Adriana Lee or anything else for that matter. I mean, his disrespect towards the situation even after everything came out was so blatant that OTK had to address it in their newest statement. How are you going to believe a guy like that wasn't actually intentionally minimizing the sexual misconduct of someone who is his self-proclaimed best friend? Even though there is no direct evidence that could prosecute him definitively in a court of law, you have to be giving insane levels of benefit of the doubt and intentionally ignoring his disrespectful and dismissive behavior for this entire situation in order to believe that he wasn't intentionally minimizing the situation. Even the people who accept this answer from OTK have to acknowledge this was primarily done for PR. And with PR in mind, I've got to say this was a genius move to post on New Year's Eve. The time where viewers and creators alike are so busy celebrating New Year's that they can't even be bothered to look into this right now. You really want me to do this like right now? You want me to cover this literally like 10 minutes out from fucking New Year's Eve? Like Jesus Christ, bro. Like, some of you motherfuckers need help, dude. I swear to God. I'm over here trying to keep the vibes up, okay? I know that if I weren't a content creator, despite probably still caring about the situation as a viewer, three months later, honestly, I don't know if I would care enough to stop my New Year's festivities in order to read this, let alone care about it the next day when I'm hungover. And I do think that was intentional on OTK's part. Maybe it's a little bit too conspiratorial to some of you guys for me to say all this, but part of the job of being a famous content creator, and especially being an organization that ties together and represents large content creators, is to think about what is 
is the best way to present yourself online in order to gain the most money possible. OTK isn't just a group of friends, it's a business. And I think to ignore that just because they started out as people in their bedrooms talking to a screen is just being willingly ignorant to how this industry has evolved over the last decade and what the goal of a content creator organization is, which is to protect their creators and make money first and foremost. Not stand firmly against sexual harassment, assault, and bigotry of all forms, while upholding core values of equality, respect, and inclusivity. Like, of course, most people don't like any of those things, but it's hard to believe you stand firmly against it when you reinstated Miskiff as a member of OTK after it's been proven time and time again, even by OTK in this very statement, that Miskiff does not hold those values. And if OTK did uphold those values, I don't think Jay Schlatt would have left. But hey, that's just opinion and speculation. And now that you've spent over two hours to see exactly what played out over September and October of 2022 with Miskiff, in addition to his more recent return to OTK at the beginning of this year, I would love to see what you have to think about this entire situation. Do you still think he's a piece of shit? Do you think he was a piece of shit, but now he's improving? Or do you think that he was in the right all along? Whatever your opinion is, I would love to hear it in the comment section below now that you've been fully informed on everything. And since you've watched the video all the way up until this point, I assume you probably want to be subbed to my channel for more videos, so be sure to check if you are, because sometimes YouTube unsubs people. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it, and with all that being said, I will see you in another video.